I'm coming up! Earn points for travel with Credit One Bank and live large. Yo, I am so sorry that the music was that loud, guys. I, it was going through twice. It was playing on my computer and also I had the stream open and I forgot to mute the tab. So it was playing through the stream tab and then my actual music and then it just kept looping and getting louder and louder and louder. I'm sorry about that. I hope that uh, if, if this is a, a video that is cut out, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So let me go ahead and I, I'm a little hectic right now because I just got home. Let me fix this display capture here for you guys so we can get set up to watch streams. The first game, we are going to start with Moltres Division because I saw a lot of people recommending that. And we're just going to go straight in order here. Uh, let me go ahead and get this all set up here. Shouldn't take but a second. How is everybody doing today? Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do this. Uh... So I, I am very sorry about that music. If this does happen to be an edited and post thing, I sure hope Kurt cuts that out. That looks like we should be, it should, should be good. Just about damn near. Looks like it's off a little bit. Oh, it's gonna bug me. Good, good, good. Alex Cool Rocket, how are we doing today? Um, but yeah, we're gonna start with you, Corey, because you're the, you're the first game played. So we're gonna start with you. I'm doing all right. Today's honestly, it's not been the best day. It's been very, very hectic, very rushed, but I'm hopefully, hopefully gonna have a good stream here. We're just gonna, we're gonna jump right into it, guys. 
JJDL week one, all games were played. I am actually shocked by that. We had so many, I don't even, I don't need my headset on. I don't know why I have my headset on. We have so many individuals in this league. We have 48 people total, that's 24 matches a week. And we somehow have every single game played on time. So shout out to all of you guys. This is awesome. Uh, and no drops week one, which was very much not anticipated. Very much not anticipated, but we'll, we'll go ahead and jump in here. I'm sure there'll be more people flooding in as time goes on. Um, yeah, be sure to leave a like if you haven't already, by the way, it helps push out the stream and we're just going to start here. So I, I think the way that I'm going to do it, I'm going to just go on fast and we're just going to go kind of through it. We're not going to go through the matchups or anything. Uh, we'll do team preview and stuff like that, but 24 matches played on time is insane. Trey for mod straight up. The whole community is about to see me throw. That's okay, man. Hey, week one nerves happen. So we see a Corbinite, Don Dozo, Espeon, Screamtail, Roaring Moon, and Arbeliva. And then with Pep's side, we see a Klefki, Gastron, Mousehold, Mimikyu, Chimpo, and Oricorio. I believe this is Terra, Roaring Moon, and Terra... I don't think they brought their Terra mod. Pep, did you bring your Terra mod if you're here? Would have made sure a drop happened? Yeah, you would have, huh, Alex? You would have. So... We're gonna go ahead and jump in here. I think based on this, so this is one of the few games that I actually did see. I tried my best. Yo, thank you so much, Trey, for the two dollars. I really appreciate you, man. Um, I appreciate it a lot. That's, that's three donations you've done so far, keeping me in business here, buying me a coffee for real. Um, this is one of the few games that I did see, so I do actually know what happens here. I tried to stay clear of most games. I maybe watched three or four throughout the week. And if I joined, you saw me join. It was just to make sure that nothing, nothing crazy me. was happening. So we're just going to go ahead and hop in here. I do expect, let's see. Obviously, Ring Moon is really good on Corey's side. Fairy type Mimikyu is not good into uh, into Roaring Moon here. And I believe he's Terra Steel, Terra Fairy, Fire, something like that. He's Terra Fire, I think. Uh, you don't remember Pep's Terra, but I'm pretty sure it's not one of these. I am also fairly certain it is not one of these. Dude. Thriller, what the fuck, man? Oh my gosh. Dude. Thank you, Thriller. I'm gonna get emotional, man. Thank you so much. Sign me. I cannot believe you just gave me $50. Thank you so much, man. So I'm going to be transparent. Like I'm about to have a baby at the end of July. So most of this money goes towards bills. Um, either bills paying Kurt to edit videos or helping with the baby. So I, it just, it means the world to me, man. I really appreciate you, Thriller. That means so much, man. I uh, figure I give this to you as a good friend should. But in all seriousness, it's been amazing to finally hang with you again after so long. Can't wait for the next chance we get to throw down. Yo, shout out to Thriller, man. Holy shit. Thriller is somebody that I've known in the community since literally I started. So shout out to you, man. I, I really appreciate that. That is insane. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I'm supposed to function like a normal human being now. That is a, that's not a small chunk of money. $2 isn't a small chunk of money in the grand scheme of things. I just, I really appreciate that, man. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Thriller, you can choose the next game we watch after this one. If you want it to be yours or if you want to be somebody else's, let me know. You can choose the next game after this one. But we'll go ahead and get in here. I, I do anticipate maybe a Klefki lead on Pep's part. Uh, I think Roaring Moon does obviously really good. And should be the in-game for Corey. The in-game for Pep is looking like Chi Pao. Chi Pao does really, really well. You have to figure out Roaring Moon's Terra type. Uh, you got to get Screamtail chipped a little bit. I'm expecting maybe Spike's Klefki. Uh, and you're going to have to keep those up. Corp Knight is obviously going to be very, very annoying. But I think... I think Spikes into Chi Pao can definitely win this game for Pep. So we're going to go ahead and jump in here. We're going to see Gastrodon and a Screamtail lead and Rocks with the Earth Power. So this seems like a fair fair play on both parts. Uh, this could be an Encore. Screamtail could go for the Encore right now, try to lock this into the Earth Power potentially, and then get a free Corviknight. Or we could see a, maybe a switch out and then Rocks on the opposing side by Pep. So we are going to see a Corviknight switch here and then Rocks from Pep. So we are going to see a Deep Bug here. I am a little curious why we went for Stealth Rock turn. Uh, guys, stop. Stop. Stop, guys. Thank you, Alex, for the $10, man. I really appreciate that. That means the world. Alex is also another really close friend. So thank you, guys. You guys are going to break me. I really appreciate that. Somebody sign me. I'm just trying to talk about Pokemon, man. Thank you guys so much. 
thank you guys so much i i can't say enough words a alex i appreciate you thriller i appreciate you trey i appreciate you and even if you haven't donated that is completely fine you just being here means the world to me and i really do appreciate it man um but yeah so uh, defog i don't know if defog makes the most sense on my end because just because of the fact that i think rocks do a lot more for Corey lego than they do for pep and I don't agree with getting rocks turn up turn up turn one necessarily just to automatically defog them. But hey, if you valued them that much, maybe you were sashed on something that I'm unaware of, then so be it, right? We're gonna see an ice beam do absolutely nothing to the core of night. Core of night's gonna U-turn into the Espeon and bounce those rocks back. Fantastic play from Corey's part. We're gonna see the cleft key switch out as the grass knot comes through. I was anticipating maybe a trick from the Espeon. Core of night comes out as we're gonna see reflect and light screen, and then Corey is going to defog both of those away as he highly values those to get Roaring Moon into a good position. And we're going to see a U-turn. A whole lot going on here. A whole lot going on. Thank you guys so much for everything so far, man. Holy shit. Uh, Scream is going to come out on the Clef Key, assuming they don't have Flash Cannon, I suppose. Uh, and they do not. We're going to see a Thunder Wave on the Scream Tail as a Wish is in the air now into the Espeon. And we are going to see the Trick Espeon this time on the Oricorio. Okay, so we're going to see Oricorio grab... What was that? Ori Corio is going to have the choice specs now. So, Heavy Duty Boots is pretty clutch for the Espeon, actually. So, tricking that on the Ori Corio, that might not be exactly what you wanted, but now it's locked into whatever move it clicks, which is fantastic. It can't beat you with the Quiver Dance set, which is fantastic, obviously. We're going to we're gonna see the Gastrodon come in here. Uh, and then in comes the Corviknight. Corviknight pretty much walls this Gastrodon until the end of time. And we see a double into the Chi Impow. Can Chi Impow 2 at KO this? I'm going to guess the answer is no. We're going to see the Ori Corio come in as Don Dozo comes in, and we see that is the answer to the Chi and Pao on Corey's end. U-turn comes out on the Scream Tail, and in comes the Mouse Hold here. And Mouse Hold, oh, is Corviknight Rocky Helmet? Have we seen that yet? Corviknight might be Rocky Helmet. We're going to see Tidy Up, a basically a Dragon Dance, and the Miss Super Fang, which is pretty unfortunate. Pretty unfortunate, but I don't think Mousehold had anything to take advantage after the Super Fang. So he's at 71, he would have been to 35, so he would have been around 80%. So I don't necessarily think that mattered. Uh, we're going to see the Super Fang come off this time. Not Rocky Helmet. We are pressured, though. We're going to see another tidy up. How how boosted does this have to be to kill this Corv Knight? Drill Peck does a massive chunk. We're going to see Population Bomb. It's going to do about 50% if he lands all 10. I would assume Wide Lens with a tidy up set. No, six hits, or he got very unlucky. You turn into Don Dozo, which I assume is unaware, forces the mouse hold out, body press comes off. What is this Mimikyu going to do? Can Mimikyu be in a position to sword stance? No, it's like Pep's team against Corey just has a really hard time breaking. Clef Key plus Chi Pao does really well, but the other four Pokemon are a little tough. No helmet is a little bit interesting. Is helmet mouse's gloves? Okay. Okay. That's pretty cool then. That is pretty cool then. Okay, mouse hold his gloves. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna see a trick from the from the Mimikyu, and we're gonna see a choice scarf on the Arbaliva now. That is interesting. And he's gonna try to now swords dance on this Arbaliva as the Deagling comes out. Mimikyu is pretty good, especially with defense. So it should actually be able to take this no problem. It might even be able to set up another one. Yeah, it is gonna set up another one. Let's see if it takes two. It does take two. Play rough, probably two it KOs this Pokemon. But it doesn't matter because Don Dozo is always in the back and does not care about your setup threats. We're going to see Gastron come in here. Liquidation comes out. Storm Drain. Gastro is probably going to go for some attack to hit the Espeon. But in comes Arvaliva. Yeah, I did go for the Earth Power to cover the Espeon play. Not bad by any means. Ori Corio always comes out on this Arvaliva. It should be a U-turn. I would, I would anticipate the freest U-turn of your life. Oh, Roost. But now you're locked into Roost is the only thing. But I guess you do know that this thing is locked into Giga Drain. You probably don't go for another one. Oh, you do. I was going to say, you probably don't go for another one because you only have 10 PP. So, or 8 PP, so you want to save that as much as you can. Uh, we're going to see Clef Key come in on the Arbaliva. Good play. Get a screen up, potentially. Or maybe double on the Corviknight. Light screen is going to come up. And Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave on the Corviknight could be potentially huge. It could stop the Corviknight. Jerrica. Thank you, Jerrica. Jerrica, look at what happened. Alex donated ten dollars and Thriller donated fifty dollars. It's just unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, we're gonna see the D Gleam come off from the Clef Key. Corviknight is gonna eat that up, obviously. And Morning Moon comes in. Protosynthesis. We're gonna see the Booster Energy activate. And Ori Corio comes in, and we're gonna see a sub. And that might be all she wrote. I did see this game, so I actually do know this is all she wrote. We're gonna see a Dragon Dance come off, and. Whether it was on purpose or not, Corey didn't know it worked like this because the Ori Corio got choice specs tricked. 
technically because of its ability dancer it used dragon dance the last move it used was dragon dance so it actually physically cannot attack because it does not know dragon dance so it is locked into dragon dance and this is now a plus essentially a plus one life orb because protosynthesis is 1.3 times roaring moon behind a sub and there's just just about damn near nothing that Pep can do at this point. And that's a cool mechanic. I mean, it is what it is. I don't think Pep played bad by any means. I think Pep's team is a little tough to into this matchup. I don't know what Pokemon they didn't bring, but I know these these four did not do super well. Gastron did fine, but Mousehold did really poor in the matchup. Um, we're going to see a Thunder Wave come off, but it's a dark type Roaring Moon, so it's going to just boost past this, and I think it just wins here, right? Yeah, we're just going to see Roaring Moon clean up. So good game by Corey. To Thank you for the 99 cents and the cat, Jerrica. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Somebody sign me! That is, that is a super weird interaction. If it was intentional, it was really good. If it was intentional, I agree. It would have been fantastic. However, I know Corey did not know that was intentional. If that was intentional, fantastic. But So we are going to see 6-0 in our first game. So shout outs to Corey. Thriller, if you want to go ahead and pick the next game, if you're still around, let me know what game you want to see while I finish talking about this one. But um, So I am going to try at the end of each game to give a little bit of like uh, what I think could have gone differently. I think Corey obviously played really well. And I don't think Pep could have known that i don't think anybody would have known that's the interaction with dancer unless it's happened to you before right so i, I don't think they necessarily did bad my only thing is with the team building i think chi and was great i think klefki was great i think you probably should have in some fashion prioritized spikes against Corey's team which lacks good removal other than corviknight uh in some fashion or at least some way to beat the espion maybe um, and I don't necessarily like how we have mono setup threats against Dondozo Corviknight. Like, Mousehold was never pushing through this team. Mimikyu was never pushing through this team. But I, when there's a Chi and Pao, there's a way, right? So, I, obviously, at the end of the day, it's because of Ori Corio can, can only dance, right? But it is what it is. Uh, we can do mine next. Okay, we can do yours next, Thriller. We can do yours next. Um, let me find your replay here. Here we go. All right, we'll go ahead and go dark mode. Always dark mode here. Let me get a drink real quick. So we're going to see Thriller versus Dracogon, who I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. So looking at the matchup, we have Enamorous T, Iron Treads, Quaqua Vol, uh, Bax Calibre, which I, if I remember correctly is Terra Dragon and Electric, uh, and then Azelf and Toxtricity. And on the opposing side, oh, this was the team that had top three really good mons, and then the rest were kind of roll fillers, right? Where I said Fortress was going to have to come every week. We see Annihilate, we see Iron Bundle. I, I, I don't remember which one is Terra off the top of my head. I mean, Lando might be the Terra on this team. Water Electric, maybe? Um, yeah, so far we're starting with Moltres, but if you guys want to see certain games, just throw them out there and we can just do it in whatever order you guys want. I'm not super hard pressed on going in certain particular orders. Uh, we see Gothitelle, Grimmsnarl, and Fortress. So just looking at this matchup, obviously the top three Pokemon on Dracogon's team all do really well. Annihilate specifically in this matchup looks horrifying. If it, I don't think it's his terror, but if it is, obviously that makes it a little better. Otherwise, you're going to have to watch out for things like Enamorous, um, but it looks like if and I leave can get into a prime position to win pretty easily. Iron Bundle, I, I would assume, is going to be some sort of a momentum type Pokemon. Lando is probably going to be some sort of rocks. There's going to be screens on Grimmsnarl, obviously. I think to enable, excuse me, to enable the Annihilate, uh, got to tell the trap probably the enamorous to try to mitigate that for the annihilate or even the toxicity it looks like dragon's team is built specifically for the annihilate and it looks like thriller's team is built to overwhelm his opponent quackle vol bax caliber azel toxicity they all do good and if thriller can keep up momentum he's going to be in a really good spot and then obviously he brought iron treads for removal because fortress is there uh, and then enamorous just looks like it does pretty well in the matchup it looks like fairy's pretty good into the opponent so lando was terra flying and electric not water okay so flying and electric so We'll go ahead and jump in here. What kind of leads are we looking at here? We have a top Tristy, which I think is a good lead on Thriller's part, and we are going to see Lando, so good counter lead. But we see a balloon from Thriller, which is really cool. Lando is going to go for the U-turn and is going to break the balloon on Toxtricity. As what's Tox going to go for? Boom Burst? Boom Burst as the Annihilate comes in. So let me know. Uh, actually, I don't know how this interaction works. Does he get the Rage Fist boost? Yes or no? Yo, 
Thank you so much for the two dollars, two euros, two euros, FLZM. And let me know if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, by the way, guys. But thank you so much, guys. You guys are breaking me with the uh, the tips. And I also I need to fix the uh, the tip tracker because it just shows it shows my Twitch tip tracker for some reason. I might have to fix this some other time. Yeah, I'm, it looks like it's linked to my Twitch, so I might have to fix this some other time, but let me know if, if you guys know if they get the Rage Fist boost, but we're going to see the Annihilate come in on the Toxtricity as the Enamorous comes out, and the, oh my goodness, the crazy gunk shot call. I don't think it would since he was actually here. I don't know. I don't think so either. Yeah, I, okay, okay. I don't think so either. So, gunk shot comes out. It's going to do some massive damage here to the Enamorous. What a call from Draco over there. We're going to see gunk shot go again. Uh, and that actually raises some questions as to what Draco's set is on this Annihilate. Because it looks like if he was, if he was just bulk up, it would, do, it would do wonders in this matchup. If he was bulk up Rage Fist Rust Talk, that looks like it would actually destroy this matchup. So because he's gunk shot, he is not one of those moves so i'm curious what m other moves he might be or maybe if that's banded damage or what the case may be uh tox is going to come in and good switch into goth Patel on draco's part we're going to see boomers come out and do 47 percent to the goth as tox is going to hang on and be able to get another big boom burst off on this goth Patel. narrowly missing out on the ko but whittling it down to where it can't do much so now annihilate looks like it's in a really good position to win this game if it was uh if it was a bulk upset right if it was if it was a bulk up set, it looks like it's in actually a really solid position to win. But also, unless this goth is like Char and Bax who come in here, uh, obviously Azov who come in here and click its new move, get a special attack boost. Uh, I'm very curious to see. We see Quaco Vol, I assume, go for like a U-turn here. Maybe an Aqua Step. We are going to see an Aqua Step do 22% to Fortress. Is it Rocky? It is Rocky Helmet. Uh, Thriller is going to go for the Swords Dance. Okay. And the Volt Switch from the Fortress. So now a plus two, plus one Quaco Vol, plus one, plus one Quaco Vol staring in the face of Lando. We're going to see the switch, I assume, fearing the Terra Electric Scarf. It looks banded. That might be banded damage. You're right. I don't know in any enamorous calcs off the top of my head. Uh, defensive enamorous versus him, so that's why he was expect. Okay. So we see the Iron Treads come in, and we are going to be booster speed and we actually see terra flying terra blast i mean that makes just as much sense uh we're gonna see the switch out into annihilate here as the knockoff comes out and we see it is expert belt okay and we see iron head come out from the iron treads and we're actually gonna see that annihilate gain a lot of hp back from that drain punch another iron head come out and then no flinches as the iron treads goes down but can back caliber no maybe no, Azelf comes in here. We're going to see Mystical Power come out. Oh, Azelf's new move coming out. Plus one special attack. Guaranteed plus one special attack. Lando comes back in. You can only assume at this point that it is Scarf. It is guaranteed Scarf. U turns on the Azelf into the Grim Snarl. Mystical Power, obviously immune. Uh, we're going to see a sucker from the Grim Snarl. I was so surprised he was electric. Uh, you mean flying? Can we send our teams that we brought? Yeah, man. If you want to, you can uh, DM me or just send them in the chat. Uh, any teams that were uh were brought if you guys whenever i'm watching your guys games or if you want to explain anything in the chat feel free to do that as well i'm trying to look at the chat and balance the two out uh what is mystical power so mystical power was a new move introduced in pokemon legends Arceus for azelf and it is i think it's 90 accuracy 90 base power plus one special attack or is it, it I, I might be wrong about the base power let me actually look that up because i don't want to give you false information mystical power pokemon uh 70 base power my bad 70 base power 90 accuracy guaranteed plus one special attack Azelf signature move it's really good it's really strong and it actually makes Azelf a lot better in my opinion uh Azelf did lot lose some stuff like knockoff and stuff but that, that's a conversation for another day um so it looks like we're at the point in time where Bax caliber kind of has to win for thriller here we're gonna see sucker punch Azelf goes down so we can so if Bax caliber comes in ba Bax caliber kind of has to do it all at this point if Bax caliber is dd this could be interesting. Or Swords Dance, maybe. Swords Dance, uh, Swords Dance Salakberry. Um, but with, with the uh, Fortress in the back, uh, Draco is really going to have to let this thing set up to see a win con. For Thriller to see a win con. But even if the back Caliper can break through the Fortress just a little bit, Quaco Vault is also opened up significantly. So actually, these two Pokemon can open for each other pretty well right now. We are, I assume, going to see the Reflect go up here. We are going to see the Reflect go up as the Dragon Dance comes off. And Thriller, at this point, has to hope that he's not foul play on his Grim Snarl. And if he's not foul play, Thriller's in a really good spot. Uh, we're going to see a parting shot, actually. Oh, Clear Amulet! Oh, man! For this exact moment. That is that is hype. That is So I assume Sucker Reflect Light Screen parting shot. I can only assume. I can only assume. Uh, 
90% accuracy scares me. 90% is scary. For sure. So we're going to see the Dragon Dance. We're going to see two Dragon Dances come out. As Thriller just called that in prep. That was great prep for the clear amulet. We're going to see Fortress come in and another Dragon Dance come out. I'm not quite sure Fortress can really do anything to Bax. In the Terra Electric, it could Body Press. Um, it could Volt Switch for Momentum. It could Earthquake. Gyro. Gyro is not going to do a whole lot. We'll see what he goes for here. We're going to see Break Break through the screen. Break the screen. Rocky Helmet damage. Body Press is going to do 28%. This looks like it's just a Bax Calibre sweep, huh? Terra Blast is going to kill the Fortress. Good play going for Terra Blast to not take the Rocky Helmet chip. Sucker comes out. Terra Blast is going to kill the Grimmsnarl. I'm a little curious there as to why we didn't reflect. Because the play might have been reflect and then intimidate with Lando. And then it would have just been essentially a neutral Baxcalibur. Um, no. Iron Bundle probably couldn't have lived that. It probably didn't make a difference. Unless you cycled Intimidates. But even then, he could Dragon Dance. It didn't really matter. It didn't matter at the end of the day. Uh, Lando is going to come in. Oh, clear amulet anyway. No, it, it never mattered. We're going to see Terra Blast come out. Down goes Lando. This should just be a Baxcalibur in game, huh? Baxcalibur is going to take it home. Baxcalibur doing it all for Thriller. Baxcalibur is crazy, man. Good game to Thriller. Hey, JJ, did you watch Pokeaim versus Druby PPL week one? One of the Hacksies games I've seen in a while. I did. Yeah, actually, I did watch that with uh, with my friend Brody last night. Shout out to Brody. Um, yeah, that was that was pretty bad luck. I think I still think Druby played pretty well for that being his first draft league game in five years. So I, I was thoroughly impressed with that. But yeah, he definitely did get a little bit lucky. Those two ceaseless edge misses were a little unfortunate. Um, yeah, I can't intimidate under clear amulet. Yeah, no, I think that was fantastic. I think Thriller, you set yourself up in a, in a pretty good position. Um, like I said, the only thing that I think I would have done differently in this matchup if i was draco it's just on matchup i obviously don't know what the rest of the team is right but on matchup i would have assumed maybe a piapa berry bulk up mono rage fist set would have just went insane rage fist um rage fist bulk up rust talk i think it would have just went insane and there was very little thriller could have done about that set to be completely honest uh, just a split death bulk up annihilate would have went crazy and it looks like the team was set up for that too yeah i'm not sure why we weren't or what the what the full set was. I, that's that's what I would have done, but it is what it is. Thriller set himself up in a fantastic position with Dax Caliber. The clear amulet was awesome. So great game to Thriller. What games do you guys want to see next? Anybody have any game recommendations over here? And uh, while we're at it, why don't you go ahead and leave a like on the video? We're only at 10 likes right now, but we got 22 viewers. It's absolutely free. Helps the stream out a ton. Helps me out a ton, man. I really really appreciate it. Jerica, don't send me baby pictures of myself. Let's see what games we want to see next. I do have one pulled up that we could do. I guess I guess I'm just going through Moltres Division until I'm told otherwise. Let's see. Moltres replays. Can we watch mine? Uh, so Dashing said his first. So we're going to do Dashing and then we're going to do yours, Aurora, assuming you guys do not play each other. This was the one I had pulled up. We'll do this in a minute. So we'll do dashing and then we'll do uh, you, Aurora. Let me pull that one up as well. Yeah, faced crab. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Your paste. Um, I'm not sure if uh, if my chat blocked your paste. If it did, you can. Send it to me on Discord dashing if you want. Because I do not see a paste. Or ping me in uh, uh, Moltres chat, something. And we can look at your paste before we jump into it. Oh, this one's Aurora's. Hold on. We'll do yours next, Aurora. And then I see Trey said he wants his after that. So we'll do Trey's after that. Yeah. Yeah, of course, dashing. Go ahead and DM it, man. That is absolutely fine. You love to see Denali's game to learn something? Okay. So we'll do... The, the order right now is dashing into Aurora's game, into Trey's game, into Denali's game. This is what we'll do right now. Uh, Trey, go ahead and pull these up so I don't forget. And then I believe Denali is in Zapdos. Zapdos replays... Uh, Denali. I'll go ahead and turn that dark off so this is the order that we'll do things in uh okay let's 
Okay, Dashing just DM'd me that paste. Tusk was supposed to be packed, but it was eject button. Okay, let me see what we have here. So this is the paste. You guys can't see it. I don't... I... I can't I can't configure it. So we'll, we'll just read off what his pace is. He was a uh, we'll also switch to his side. So we have iron leaves with the quirk drive, obviously, with booster energy, side blade, wild charge, swords dance and protect. Uh, looks like that does decent in the matchup. If we is there like an electric terrain setter? Maybe not. Plus one booster energy still does probably a lot to all of these things. Uh, protect is really nice for the slithering that's good prep. We have Discharge, Brave Bird, U-Turn, and Roost Zapdos. I can only assume the opponent had a potential uh, potential Bramble Ghast. I'll have to leave in about 10 minutes. I'll watch the VOD. Sounds good, man. I appreciate you. Uh, let's see. I can only assume, assume Brave Bird is for the Bramble Ghast on the Xanthos. We have Great Tusk, Knock Off, Headlong, Close Combat, and Stealth Rock with the Eject Button. Man, that's happened to me several times, too, instead of Eject Pack. Eject Pack would have been really, really cool in this matchup, too. Uh, Volcano is going to be Taunt, Fire Spin, Earthquake, and Steam Eruption. I assume Fire Spin to trap a potential Glamora. And it looks like we have a little bit of Spadef to live whatever the Glamora probably can throw at us, assuming it's not offensive. We have a clear Amulet Backs Caliber with Dragon Dance, uh, Protect, Dragon Claw, and Earthquake, which does very well into this matchup if you ever get a dragon dance off and then we have a moon blast side shock diamond storm and body press babiri berry diancy i do like that babiri berry a lot i assume that is for the what is the babiri berry for was there something that wasn't here maybe iron head guard chomp instead of earthquake if you live in earthquake for some reason Um, but just looking at the matchup, so what I expect from the opposition let me make sure who your opponent is so i'm not talking out of my ass let me see who your opposition was. Moltres replays. It was Mr. Mag. So Firespin was for Cloudsire or Blissey. Okay, so it was Firespin Earthquake for the Cloudsire and Blissey. Gotcha. So um, I like Slitherwing a lot in this game. Obviously, he doesn't know it, but Protect and Protect on these two Pokemon right here. Iron Leaves as well as uh, Haxorus. That's fantastic prep. We have Rotom, obviously. Haxorus is Mold Breaker. Uh, Rotom's probably just here to be a good pivot and maybe a fizz death Rotom with Will-O-Wisp Will excuse me for the great tusk we have Garchomp Garchomp looks like the whole main main piece to this team looks like maybe a Swords Dance Garchomp does well once the Zapdos is chipped Glamora Hazards do fine you might want to get uh, T-Spikes up earlier rather than later because it looks like there is no grounded poison uh, and that might be the thought process there maybe Glamora into Garchomp Wincon we have Gardevoir looks like potential Scarf Gardevoir I would assume based on this matchup, just everything that it would threaten is faster. Iron Lee's Great Tusk, Haxorus. I would I would assume maybe a potential Scarf. Then Iron Jugs, uh, Flying Resist is Dianzi. So it looks like the Iron Jugs may be some type of pivot to enable something like Garchomp. So, oh, Jug gets Flash Cannon. Okay, okay, that makes sense then. We'll go ahead and hop in here. I, I'm looking at the lead. I'm assuming Great Tusk is going to be the lead since you were eject, supposed to be eject pack. We'll see what the lead on the other side is. Our guard chomp. Okay. We'll see the Draco come out. Do a lot of damage to the Great Tusk. And we are going to see an, an eject pack. No way. An eject pack from the guard chomp on what was supposed to be the eject pack Great Tusk. As the headlong rush comes out, good switch into the Iron Jugulus here. We're going to see the Dark Pulse not quite kill the Great Tusk. I'm not sure why we went for a Dark Pulse there. I, I would have assumed either uh, the plays were U-Turn if you anticipated a switch or Flying Move just to pick up the kill. Uh, this is this is something that I see... Um, not necessarily, I don't want to say it's wrong because I don't think... I understand the thought process just in case the Zapdos came in, but early game, you don't want to overpredict a whole lot because then there could be situations like this where if you just clicked a flying move, the Great Tusk was dead, right? So early game, you want to try to not overpredict super, super a ton if you don't have to. Uh, and I think if you guys stick to that thought process, you'll be a little bit better because the team that you bring should be able to handle most things and most situations. So if you kill the Great Tusk, if you, they stay in fantastic, if you don't, they go into Zapdos, you go into your Zapdos check, you go into Rotom, I assume, or Glamora, and you'll be in a pretty good spot. Um, but I assume the Dark Pulse was to catch the Zapdos. But we are going to see the Dark Pulse come out. Great Tusk is going to be eject. Eject button is going to come out. We're going to see Diancy on this Iron Jugs. As we're going to now see the U-turn. So it is a pivot. I'm curious what item it is. Probably Boots. As we're going to see Diancy get a Diamond Storm off on the Gardevoir. And a Moon Blast do nothing to the Diancy. As we see a crit, which is definitely a little bit unfortunate. Because that did not too hit KO. But it is what it is. We're going to see uh, Garchomp come in here. And we're going to see the Iron Head. 
as it does have twenty two percent to the Diancy. Is this oh plus two defense? We're plus two defense. I was like, this has to be like a mono special guard champ that's just packing Iron Head for the Diancy. I suppose. Um. Yeah. So anyway, plus two, plus two defense. We're gonna see the Moonblast come out. Moonblast not quite pick up the KO on the Garchomp. We probably live one now, and we're we are gonna see the switch out into the Glamora now. Uh, probably hoping to get some sort of hazards up. Oh, actually going for the Earth Power to try to kill the Diancie. Side Shock's gonna come out. And we're gonna see the Piapa Berry, which I assume was for the Iron Leaves. That's pretty good prep because Iron Leaves does do pretty well against them. Uh, as we're not, now gonna see Sludge Wave and down goes Diancie as Volcanion is able to come in. Which is definitely a good play. Is that the play I would have made? Yeah, probably. I mean, you could have also went Iron Leaves. I don't know the role. Maybe it killed, maybe it didn't. Well, Kenny, I'll put you in a pretty good position, though, because you are Earthquake. But it's just, if you underspeed, unless you could tell from the Diancy, no, you couldn't tell. So this might be a little tough just because you might underspeed and you don't know for sure. Unless you could tell by the HP rolls. Uh, but I assume you know you outspeed since you went into this. We're going to see... Oh, you're Terra Water. I didn't even know that. You're Terra Water. Never mind. Forget what I'm saying. That, that was a fine play. We're going to see the Steam Eruption come out. Jugulus is going to take a ton of damage here as we're going to see the Great Tusk Sack. Try to be sacked. We're going to see Knock Off come off. Uh, and Dark Pulse is now going to pick up the KO on the Great Tusk. I assume Haxorus? Is it Haxorus time? Can Haxorus take two? Is it Haxorus time? Yo, thank you so much for the one Euro Aurora. I really appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. All the donations, guys. This is crazy. You guys are overwhelming me here. You guys are overwhelming me here. So, uh, I assume it might be Haxorus time. It's Haxorus time. So, uh, the only the only bad part about this, I assume you leave two Dark Pulses because you know that they're not Somebody any type of boosting item based on previous damage. Uh, the only downside is, would be if you get crit, right? But if you get uh, flinched, if you get flinched, but then you can protect the next turn, they die to burn. Um, but it looks like if you get a dragon dance up, is the game over? Every these four die. It just comes down to Slitherwing. Do you kill Slitherwing with a dragon claw? I guess we'll see. Huh? We're gonna see knockoff come out actually, going for the knockoff instead of the dark pulse damage. I don't know if I agree with that. I think I would have went for the dark pulse damage, especially to put it in guaranteed range of Slitherwing if it was a bulkier Haxorus. I feel like I feel like Dark Pulse was the play there, or maybe uh, if Hurricane was your last move, maybe do as much damage with that. I think Dark Pulse was probably the play there, as we are going to see the Dragon, the absolute free Dragon Dance come off, and he's actually going to get one more Dragon Dance off, and now you don't have an opportunity to flinch him. So we're going to see, uh, he's just going to go for the Dragon Call, try to not get any amount of damage. We're going to see the Rotom come in now. We saw the Mold Breaker, though. So Rotom's going to... I think the play there was always Slitherwing. These three Pokemon die. You never go into these three Pokemon. Um, Slitherwing's the only Pokemon that could maybe take a hit from this. We see Slitherwing come in. Terra flying. Okay. And we're going to see the Protect for the First Impression. Fantastic prep. I really do like that. Uh, as we're going to see Dragon Claw come out. Does not quite KO the Slitherwing. We see the Terra Blast come out. Uh, did close... So, see, this is where if you would have Dark Pulse with the Hydreigon... Or the Iron Jugulus. If you were to Dark Pulse with the Iron Jugulus, this would have been in range of probably not only that, but also at close combat if you had close combat. And close combat would have done more damage there anyway. I don't think it would have killed. So I don't think it ultimately mattered. But I, I, going back to the Iron Jugulus, I would have definitely went for the Dark Pulse, I think. Uh, we're going to see the Dragon Claw come out. And then I think that just wraps the game up, right? Haxers, we're going to see a lot of lot of sweeps today. A lot of Dragon-type sweeps. Roaring Moon, Bax Calibur, and Haxorus are the three games I think we've watched so far. So that's going to be a win for dashing. So I, again, I just think the Dark Pulse play was the only misplay. I think other than that, everything was fine. Uh, so good win dashing. I, I like that. I'm sorry that you accidentally brought eject button instead of eject pack, man. I am. But it, it, you won. So it is what it is, right? So next up. Somebody sign me. Next up, we're going to talk about Aurora's game. I'm sorry if you hear me slurping, by the way. People were complaining about that. Let me know if that's a problem. We are going to switch to Aurora's side here. Two of an undisclosed currency, a currency that I clearly am not knowledgeable enough to know. Thank you so much, FLZM, again. Sent my paste? It's the replay of the dragons. I can send my paste? Yeah, sure, send your paste, Crab. That would be that would be great. Send your paste, and we will take a look. And that way we can talk about both of them. So we'll go ahead and talk about Aurora's team right now. 
while we're talking about it, or while we're waiting on Crab, we have a Assault Vest Mach. We have a Scarf Greninja, which is pretty good for into a Dragon Ball, obviously. And then I assume Assault Vest Mach is for a potential uh, Specs Noivir and Specs uh, Dragapult, Mudsdale with the Chalan Berry is really cool for the Ursa Luna. I really like that. And we have Counter, Close Combat, Stone Edge, and Earthquake. Uh, I mean, Close Combat to guarantee an Oko on the King Gambit. Stone Edge, I guess, to hit the Noivern, it looks like. And then we have Flower Lady, the Hisuian Lilligant with Close Combat, Ice Spinner, Protect, and Healing Wish. I didn't even know it got Healing Wish. That's really cool. And we have the Wide Lens on that. To not miss because we are a hustle and we are Terra Steel on that, so I can only assume this is the Terra Captain. Uh, we have Evil Shoulder, I like that. The Galarian Sloking Sludge Bomb, Future Sight, Surf, and Trick Room, which does really well into this team. And then we have the Tauros Paldea Blaze with Kudchu, Shooka Berry, Close Combat, Bulk Up, Stone Edge, and Willow I want to say Dra Aurora, I, I want to say Draco, Aurora, I want to say your team is really well. This looks like you know what you're doing, or at least you have some idea of how to build a team. Uh, that has some sort of function. You didn't bring setup into a ditto. It makes a lot of sense. You brought Pokemon that do not lose to themselves, uh, like Mudsdale and things like that, that if they turn it into, you could take advantage of with different Pokemon. I think you brought a really good team. I really like this team. I What is the uh, the Protect on the Hisuian Lilligan for? I think is my only question, but otherwise, I think I really like your team. Uh, you did bring bulk up Tauros, Paldea, Blaze, but otherwise, like, I think that does, like, you can bring setup into Ditto, especially if you have ways to beat it, and you do have ways to beat it if they turn into this with the Greninja. So I think your team is fantastic, very well built. Uh, it's supposed to count a Gambit, but if it Terra's, it's scary. So they are Terra Gambit. Uh, it's about 7 a.m.-ish. I got school, so you're awake. Let's go, Crab. Thank you for coming through to the stream, man. Uh, there is your pace right here. Let's take a look. So Crab's team, we do have a Flame Orb, Guts, Adamant, Max Attack, fuck them, right? Facade, Earthquake, Crunch, and Bulk Up, Ursa Luna. Bulk Up does look scary. Greninja does always threaten the Revenge Kill. Uh, we have Noivern with Boots, Defog, because Greninja obviously has the opportunity to Hazard Stack. I do like that. Uh, we have a Scarf Ditto. We have a Specs Meloetta with Grass Knot, Shadow Ball, U-Turn, and Sidekick. We have a Terra Fire King Gambit with Kowtow, Iron Head, Sucker Punch, and Swords Dance which does do pretty well into the matchup. And then Dragapult, Protect Draco, Willow, Hex. Uh, what is the Protect for on the Dragapult? A Scout Scarves? Uh, the Protect is mainly for Trick Room teams, or Trick Room turns. Okay, okay. so the Protect on the Lilligans for Trick Room turns. And then Crab, what's the Protect for on the Dragapult? Was there... Uh, if there's one turn on Trick Room and Luna isn't, I can stall it in Revenge. That's fair. Yeah, bringing Trick Room into Earth's Luna is definitely brave, but you have a lot of ways to Revenge it. Um... Yeah, I mean, and then Crab, your team is pretty nice as well. Looks like Wincon King Gambit. Looks like Ursaluna breaks for King Gambit. Uh, or you can get yourself in a position with Dragapult with Willow Hex to win the game potentially. Um, let's, just, let's just get right in here, right? Let's just get right in here. So we are going to go ahead and see a Noivern lead as well as a Greninja lead. And this is a Scarf, Scarf Greninja, so it outspeeds the Noivern. 122 base speed normally versus 123, so he could potentially catch the Noivern off guard here turn one. And this is just a Boots 3 attack defog Noivern. Uh, one of those attacks being U-turn. So we're going to see the Ditto come in, scouting for the Scarf. Fantastic play. As we see the Ice Beam come out, and it's going to do virtually... Oh, <laughs> actually, that did that did a pretty, pretty decent amount of damage there to the Greninja. So we're going to see the Lilligan come in, uh, expecting maybe a U-turn. I am blind and never saw Frisk turn one. Okay, so we are going to see the Greninja go for Spikes. Okay, so we are going to see Spikes. Spikes definitely hurt Aurora's team a lot. We have no removal. Do we have any boots? We don't have any boots either, do we? No, we don't have any boots, which is a little unfortunate. Oh, Aurora, one thing I do want to say about your team before I go any further. This isn't a big thing by any means, but your leftovers on Galarian Sloking and just in the future, probably go Black Sludge just in case a Mon tricks. If it's not a poison type, it gets damaged. That's literally the only difference in the grand scheme of things. It doesn't matter. But if they were like Trick or Switcheroo Noivern or Trick Melawada, you could get the Black Sludge on them and do damage to them that way. Other than that, I do like your team a lot. So we're going to see the Spice get up here. Fantastic play. From Crab getting the spikes up, we're gonna see Noivern come into the. We're gonna see the Noivern come into the Ice Spinner and absolutely get destroyed. So that was a good play on Aurora's part, realizing that the Greninja was more than likely Scarf, and the switch into this is not gonna be King Gambit. It's probably not gonna be something like the Meloetta. It could have been the Meloetta, 
Uh, but it was probably either going to be the Noivern or the Mellowata, and you didn't lose a lot with Ice Spinner at all. You you either got a kill on the Noivern, did some damage to the Mellowata, found out a little bit about its set, and pivoted around it into the Glow King accordingly. So that was a fantastic play. Way to just knock that Noivern out turn two. Way to knock that Noivern out immediately. Fantastic. So down goes the Noivern. We're going to see the Ditto come in here. Ditto is going to turn into the Lilligant here. Uh, and this was a Protect Ice Spinner Close Combat Wide Lens Lilligant, I do believe. So he can just protect here and see what the ditto wants to lock into. I assume protect is also for the ditto here. So we're gonna, we are going to see the protect and see what the ditto locks into. It locks into Ice Spinner. As we're going to see the switch out now into the Meloetta. As we're going to see the Greninja double. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic Greninja play. I assume the Meloetta was to catch the Tauros. So I understand the Meloetta switch. I also, I love the Greninja switch out. I really do. We're going to see the double into King Gambit as I assume we see the U-turn come out here. We do see the U-turn come out here, and in comes, I assume, the Mudsdale. Yeah, Mudsdale's going to come out here. Fantastic play so far. Uh, Ditto's going to come out, turn into the Mudsdale, I assume wanting to probably get rocks up. As we're going to see close combat, and Mudsdale on Mudsdale violence here, as we're going to see switch into Lilligan, into Lilligan here. I assume we see Earthquake. We do see Earthquake. Lilligan takes a little more than you would like from that, but Lilligan is going to be able to land its hit. Two hits landed so far, and we are going to see the Mudsdale go down. F fantastic plays so far, guys. This is actually a really good game so far, I think. Oh, thank you so much, FLZM, for the five donation. It's Pound Sterling. Thank you for the five Pound Sterlings. Also, feel free to watch my week one game versus Panda. I would love to hear your thoughts on the wakes that I brought. Sure thing. We will actually pull that up. We'll add that to the queue. We have two others in the queue right now. And then we will pull that one up as well. And that one on. Uh, let's see. Are you going to watch my game? Yeah, we can. Well, we'll actually, I'll go ahead and throw it in the queue on top of what we've already got in the queue so far. So you will be after you will be after Panda here. Panda and FLZM. Uh, what division were you in? Articuno? Let's see. What the vision were you in, Walt? Moltres. Okay, I'm just blind, I guess. Where is it? Ah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, we are going to be watching all of the games, though. Yo, shout out to everybody that's gave donations today, guys. This has been overwhelming, and I really do appreciate you guys. Can we not watch my game? We can watch yours last if you want, SJ. Uh... I, pound sterlings? What? You said pound sterling. Is it wrong? I'm sorry. I'm not very well versed with any foot. Let's get back to the game. So this is a good game so far. Mudsdale is going to go down to the Lilligan. Lilligan not missing so far. Uh, we're going to see Dragapult come in, which is a good play. I assume maybe a Protect's going to come out to see what the Dragapult wants to go for, what kind of set it's going to be. The obvious downside of that is the potential sub. So the question is now, do you fear the sub or do you go for the Protect to scout what potential uh, spec set? Or if they're going to go for a U-turn, what the case may be. So they are going to fear the potential sub. They are going to go straight into Muck as we're going to see a Draco come out and do a massive amount of damage. This is a AV Muck, by the way. An AV Muck versus a Dragon Fang, I believe. Let me double check that. Yes, a Dragon Fang, Max Special Attack, Timid, Dragapult. So, we're going to see the Protect come out from the Dragapult trying to scout. The knockoff is going to come out here. I assume Ursa Luna might come in. King Gambit comes in. Okay. King Gambit comes in. Drain Punch. That was the... That, again. So, Aurora, you're having fantastic reads here. That was another one of those situations where there was literally zero downside to clicking Drain Punch. The switch-ins were Ursa Luna or King Gambit. And you weren't going Meloid on a knockoff. You weren't going to stay into your Dragapult. The only reason you did is maybe if you got a Will-O-Wisp buff, but you probably don't want to risk your Dragapult's health this early into the game. So you're going to pick up another clean knockout on a very good read. As we're going to see the King Gambit go down, that's fantastic. In comes the Earth Luna. Earth Luna is probably going to claim a KO, and there's not a lot you can do about it, right? As the bulk up comes out here. So actually, actually, Close Combat probably doesn't kill this Pokemon because it is extremely bulky. I would assume Close Combat doesn't kill this, but you're going to do some massive damage. Yeah, massive damage. As we get 88% on the Earth Luna, Earth Luna is going to be able to take out the Hisui and the Ligand, and the uh, Earth Luna is probably going to go down this turn. I assume an Ice Beam is going to come off. A Dark Pulse probably, actually. A Dark Pulse makes a lot of sense. Uh, are they even Dark Pulse, actually? Hold on. Dark Pulse would have made sense there, but we were not Dark Pulse. Okay, we were not Dark Pulse. So we're going to see the U-turn on the Dragapult. I accidentally open up Minecraft. Ignore that. We're going to see Muck come in here. And Muck should be able to... 
wrap up the game, huh? We're gonna see Knockoff come off and do 54s even through burn. And we're gonna see a Drago come off and not do very much at all to the Muck. Muck's gonna be able to knock off again, knock out the Dragon Ball. And the only saving grace here is potentially Meloetta able to pick up a KO. Oh, Ursuluna's gonna come back in, pick up a KO. Okay. And then Meloetta is gonna come in and Greninja comes in and Greninja should realistically wrap up this game, huh? With just Scarf U-turns over and over. Looks like it. That did so much. That did so much damage to this Glow King. I, I want to go back just to show how much damage this did. What item were we on the Meloetta? Specs. So that Specs Meloetta is no joke. So down goes the Glow King. Greninja is going to be able to not quite pick up the knockout. Going to have to sack two extra Pokemon, but down goes the Meloetta. And Aurora is going to win. Um, the Walt is Moltres. Okay, yeah, I, I found it. I found it. I uh, should be asleep by then. Come on, SJ. SJ, we'll throw yours in the queue if you want us to, man. Uh, you cried a little. Aurora is like MVP of the whole league so far. Actually, how long will you be watching? Uh, I will be watching until I'm done with all 24 games. I'm probably going to do 12 games and then take a little break in between. I think this was our fourth game that we watched. So here I made a second misplay. The damage was absurd. That was crazy damage. Got Meloetta. But since I saw specs, I could just have doubled into Grin. That is true. You could have just doubled into Grin. Um... But at the end of the day, it didn't really matter. You just wasted differential. This was a very good game. Crap, I don't think you played bad by any means. I think Aurora just played fantastic, made absolutely great reads when they needed to. And sometimes you just get out on the back foot, man. And sometimes that just happens. I don't think you played bad at all. I think that was just a fantastic game, Aurora, straight up. Let me also, let me pull up a notepad real quick so I can write down what games we've watched so far. So we've watched Aurora in, in Moltres. We've watched Aurora versus Crab, Thriller versus Dashing uh thriller dashing uh we watched cory i think we've only watched moltres replays so far correct me if i'm wrong guys i think the only four games we've watched so far are aurora versus crab thriller i forget their uh, thrillers game dashing's game and lego's game i don't think we watched any other game so far again correct me if i'm wrong but i think those are the only four we've watched so far but uh you gotta go see a crab thanks so much for coming to the stream man i really do appreciate it yeah aurora you played great no you played great Uh, so the next one is going to be we're gonna have Trey versus Neji Boston, I believe is how you pronounce it. So this is Articuno. So we're gonna have Trey versus Neji here. It's trade time. It is trade time, baby. It is trade time. Which, by the way, speaking of trade time, we only have we have a pretty good amount of likes. We have 18 likes on the stream and 23 viewers. If you guys are watching, why not leave a like? It helps support the stream, helps push us out, helps more people find your games that we are watching right now and helps them enjoy what you guys are doing. So, y'all watch me throw. Okay, so let's check out this matchup. Did you send me your pace tray? You did. Let's see. Let's see what we've got right here. So, we have a Scarf, Annihilate, U-Turn, Rage Fist, Drain Punch, and Earthquake which looks pretty good into the matchup, I won't lie. Uh, we have a Breloom, which is Bulk Up, Mach Punch, Gunk Shot, and Toxic Gunk Shot for the... Uh, what was the Fairy that was not brought? Uh, Trey, when you can, with Poison Heal, with the uh, the Toxic Orb. We have a Loma Lola with Wish Liquidation. Play Rough? Play Rough? What do we play Rough for? Who are we running Play Rough for? A Miracle. Uh, the, I didn't know it got Play Rough. We have Bravier Hisui with Hurricane U-Turn, Esper Wing, and Calm Mind, which just, that looks fantastic in this matchup outside of the Chien Pao, but obviously dual priority, super effective against you. We have Don Fan, Treads at Home, Rapid Spin, Knock Off, Earthquake, and Ice Shard, and then Terra Fire. I can only assume this is your Terra Cap. No, Annihilate is your Terra Cap. Terra Water was Annihilate. And then we have Non-Terra, Booster Energy, uh, Agility, Energy Ball, Fiery Dance, and Sludge Wave. I can only assume Booster Speed on the Iron Moth. You watch this replay, and it's so good. Okay. Let's throw it up. Let's see what we got. Gunk was for Hatterene and Playrough was for Chi and Pao. I'm going to be honest, man. I got I to gotta see this calc myself. I got to see what the big, what the damage difference is between a liquidation and a Playrough on the Chi and Pao. Is it really that much? I got to know right now. Liquidation, Playrough. That's a lot more than I thought it would be. All right. No, nah, I'm sorry. I talked shit. That's my bad. I am sorry. I talked shit. We'll, we'll, Okay. Annihilate looking like a great win con. You can switch in on things like the Slither Wing, the Rillaboom, potentially clicking U turn. Um, grab some Rage Fist boost there. Yeah, no, Annihilate's looking great here. So I, I do also really like the win con of Iron Moth. Let me grab that paste one more time. 
Energy Ball Fiery Dance Sludge Wave. Energy Ball Fiery Dance Sludge Wave. So I assume Sludge Wave is for Dragonite. You needed Energy Ball for the Rotom. Was it possible that we could have been Psychic over uh, Energy or Psychic over Energy Ball? Yeah, for the Glamora. That's the only thing that I could say different here. So we'll go ahead. Uh, Lumino used to run Playrop in OU as a Roaring Moon answer. That is disgusting. I hate. I hate Alomalola. We're going to go ahead and jump in here. Uh, oop, not on fast. We're going to see the Annihilate Bleed in the U-turn into the Rotom. Uh, Brelum is going to come in and absorb this. Will-O-Wisp. Oh, that is so unfortunate, man. Oh, that is so unfortunate. Your Toxic or Brelum is now fucking useless. <laughs> the, I've done this so many... I I used to use Gliscor all the time, and I used to do this same shit all the time. I just can't use Toxic or Pokemon. So that blows, but it is what it is. We're going to see, I assume, a Volt Switch here, maybe. No, we're going to see a Hard Breloom here as we see a double into the Don Fan. Unfortunate. Non, uh, non Grassy Terrain, Rillaboom, by the way. You debated Psychic versus Energy Ball. That's fair. Uh, we, we are going to see no Grassy Terrain. We are going to see a U turn here. Uh, I assume you didn't go Annihilate, fearing a potential knockoff. I want to see Slytherin come in, and Slytherin kind of just claims one, right? Where do you go? Alomalola? Don Fan? That makes sense. I want to see Terra flying. You you're stuck in the Vortex here, man. We're stuck in the Vortex. Rotom is going to come in. No way you call the Volt Switch, right? Ah! Oh my gosh, you did call the Volt Switch. You called the Volt Switch. You stayed in. Your Don fan lives on seven. And we're going to get a big knockoff off and knock off the leftovers. No longevity for the Rotom. Massive dodge from the Don fan here. It's looking like... Is it, so this is now, I can only assume this is in range of a uh, plus one energy ball from Iron Moth. And that's probably the reason you stayed in because you assumed you lived one. I can only assume. And I assume we're just looking towards the in game of Iron Moth here. So the in game of Iron Moth, it looks like this thing needs to be fucking dead or under 50%. And this thing needs to also be chipped. Multi scale needs to be gone uh, to, for us to get into a position to win this game. We can get an agility up on a couple of different things. It actually is really good speed depth. We can agility on the Rotom. Uh, we can get agility on the Rotom. Moving on. Knockoff is going to come off again. So, right there, I might have preserved the Donphan as a sack and just sacked off my Burn Breloom, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to see the will o -Wisp come off here as we're just trying to sack off this Donphan. This Donphan's got to go, man. This Donphan's got to go. Breloom's going to come back in here. We're going to see Rotom switched out. And we're going to see a Mist Toxic. Hey, this is just not going your way, Trey. This is just not going your way, man. This is not going your way. We're going to see Knockoff come off. Down. Uh, uh, there goes his Toxic Orb. Eh. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Trey. That would have done probably a clean 50 because I assume it Oko's normally. Ah, that sucks. That sucks. Flum Flem, thank you for the two unknown currency. I don't, I'm not sure what currency that is. Which division brought the heat sets this week? Well, so far, we've only watched Moltres games. This is the first Articuno game, so I guess we'll see at the end of the day. Hard disagree, Star. Star, don't you be hopping in here, man. Not now. Not now, Star. Not now, man. Uh, oh, but yeah, Quaxwell, probably. That's a good call, SJ. Definitely Quaxwell. So we see the unfortunate gunk shot miss. In comes the Slitherwing. Can we get a gunk shot poison to make up for it, mayhaps? A double into the Annihilate. So, I assume you're going to U-turn here and not respect the Scarf. You're faster regardless. I don't remember if you're max speed. Let me double check. You actually would not outspeed if they are Scarf. So, I, I not respecting the Scarf. Hard U-turn into a Loma Lola. And we're going to see the Will-O-Wisp come off. So, U-turn Will-O-Wisp. Not sure last two moves. Uh, Loma Lola is going to eat this up. And we're going to see the Glamora come in as a wish comes off. Are you passing this into Brelum right now? Annihilate. Okay, good play. No, good play. Good play. You get the Rage Fist boost and you're back up to full HP. I love that. I actually love the interaction between Annihilate and Alomaloa in this matchup. Uh, Rage Fist comes out. It's going to do a lot of damage to this guy. But now T-Spikes are up. <sighs> we got to get into our Iron Moth, unfortunately, now. Otherwise, Alomaloa. Oh, your boots, Alomaloa. This is probably why you were boots, Alomaloa, right? So this is fine. This is fine. This is it's a pound star. I called it a fucking sterling earlier because someone baited, me, someone donated and baited me into thinking it was a sterling. <laughs> Thank you, star. This is Alex Korok. I listen, star. I was gonna fix it. I, I, I'm gonna fix the uh, the donation tracker on the layout, but it quite simply 
is linked to my Twitch straight up. So shout out though, this is this was a good. I like the Alola Alola and Annihilate interaction a whole lot. Uh, we're gonna see Earth Power come out, do 33% to this Annihilate, and now Ridge Fist is 150 base power. And the resists are looking lackluster. Actually, this Pokemon looks like it's in uh, it's in good position. A what? I call it a fucking Sterling, man. All right. Anyway, so we two two T spikes are up now, which is actually doesn't fucking matter for the rest of your team, Trey. In comes the Slitherwing. In comes the Slitherwing. Did that not just die to a Rage Fist? Hold on. We're leaving the cow crop after this one. Did that not just die to a rage fist? What did we what did we switch out for? No, no way it didn't. What's your we were 250 we were max adamant. Did that not die to a 150? That that had a pretty good chance to die. A uh, Trey's Terra Water on Annihilate. Wait, what was the Why did we not raid? Did you not win? Did you not win the game here? Dragonite. Did you not at least kill Slitherwing? You were base 150 power. So you didn't kill the Dragonite, but you did kill the Slitherwing. Unless he was super bulky. Did we know he was super bulky? You did 10% with a U-turn before. Let's check. Okay. Okay, he was he was bulky. He was bulky. Okay, okay. Never mind, Trey. Never mind. Do we know the thing's item? Uh, this thing's item? No. We know we have Trey's paste. We do have Trey's paste. Brave Bird? Who the fuck on the screen gets Brave Bird, Star? There's not one Pokemon on the entire team that gets Brave Bird. Maybe Hisui and Braviary. Okay, every game it was bulky. So, yeah. So, I, after looking at the calc... You were right. I was going on a tangent for no reason. It does look to be bulkier for sure. Willow does not necessarily suggest bulky because I ran quite a few offensive slither wings with Willow. But based on the U-turn damage, it does look to be a li at least a little bit bulkier. Maybe not max bulk, but it looks like it probably would not have killed. Like if he was just max HP, yeah. So it probably did not kill. This dude's talking about Brave Bird. I don't know who the fuck Star is talking to right now. He's talking to his fucking self. We're gonna see this. So we are gonna see this. Which a hard Iron Moth. On the hard on the willow on the willow is he gonna get it Woo. Woo. we're not gonna set up in this thing's face right we're just gonna go for the kill we're just gonna go for the sludge wave damage guarantee put this rain thing in range of rage fist right we're not gonna set up we're not gonna set up we're not gonna set up good stuff good shit and you get the special attack boost oh no no oh why did we not agility why did we not agility because you you you, your booster's gone, and you're, you're probably in the best position you're ever going to be in. Dragonite, multi-scale. You, you would have died to the Dragonite, but you would have put it in range of Rage Fist. So this thing probably wasn't Thunder... My thought process here, this thing is not is not Thunder Wave. This thing's not Thunder Wave. You're not Willow Thunder Wave. That, that doesn't make sense, right? If you agility here, you lived one Hydro even, like, anyway, right? You killed the Rotom, Dragonite would have had to come in, you either would have revealed E-Speed, or you would have done a shit ton with, uh, with Sludge Wave, broke multi-scale, and put... It in range of Rage Fist. Plus one. Yeah, Sludge Wave would have done 50 through multi scale. That was the one turn you threw. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Doesn't pump. If pump could potentially put you in E speed range, but I don't know if how many people are running E speed uh, into Annihilate, into this, into this matchup specifically. Maybe you were worried about Sucker Punch with Chi and Pal? I got Zona C and Volcarona in the Smog Summer Regional. That is awesome, Walt. I still can't get over Star Wars talking about Brave Bird. Who's talking about Brave Bird? But yeah, I do. I, I agree. I do think agility was the play. You, it, it, No matter what, right? Even if the Dragonite was E-Speed, you would have been put in a really good spot, right? Because Hydro has a chance to miss regardless. How much? I actually am curious if Rotom... Let's see. How much does a Rotom... Let's, let's assume defensive Rotom. How much does a defensive Rotom Hydro do to you? A lot. No, you would have been put in range of E-Speed for sure. But I still think that was... I, I stand by that was the play. A little banded Sucker Punch from Fool? I'm learning all sorts of things today. Let's see. Banded Sucker Choice Band. Are you sure? How bulky were we? 
Oh, we were bulky, bulky, huh? Max HP. Oh, we were bulky, bulky. You live most of the time, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Your max HP moth. Okay, so we see the... Uh, we see the Scarf for Liboom coming. He clicks stomping. Down goes the Iron Moth. Star, how about you get out of my chat, man? What are you doing talking here? Star, wait, why are you not mod in my chat? Are you not mod? Hold on. As moderator. Uh, standard moderator. I don't know why you weren't mod. You're not mod, Star. Uh, but so stomping comes out. We are going to see the Iron Moth go down. I still really like your odds to win with Annihilate, though. I still do. If you just get in, literally, if you just break multi skill on Dragonite, you, you are in a really good spot, I think. So, Nylip's gonna come out. In comes Slithering, dies, right? Oh, U turn! We're gonna see a U turn, which I guess was a fine play. You potentially broke a multi skill on this. You did massive damage to this. You keep it alive. In comes the Braviary, trying to go for a Braviary thing here. Uh, Flum Flam, thank you for the two Sterlings. <laughs> Uh, do we think Moth lives thousand waves at this HP? Thousand waves? Who's got thousand waves? We're talking about Brave Bird and th what mod on the screen gets both thousand waves and Brave Bird? It has to be a Loma Lola, right? This shit gets play rough. It must get thousand waves and Brave Bird too, I guess. I guess. I should have swapped Umbrella and preserved the Moth. That's also fair. That is also absolutely fair. I should have scouted for the, uh, the Scarf for sure, but it is what it is, man. Wait, why are you not? Hold on, Star. Add as moderator. This dude. There. You're mod now. Damn. Um. So, okay. So, we're going to see the Dragonite come in on the... We're going to land a hurricane. We're going to land a hurricane. We're going to land a hurricane. We're going to break the multi-scale. This is massive. Dragon Dance is going to come out. Are we going to land another one? We're going to land another one! Okay, and does the Scarf Annihilate outspeed this? I actually am not sure. If the Scarf Annihilate outspeeds this, you're in such a good spot to just win this game. Oh, and the confusion! Dragon Claw, down goes... You, I mean, you're only, play, you're only play, right? Because I assume Mach Punch from Burn Breloom doesn't kill. You could also go Loma Lola and kill, try to kill with Play Rough. Your plays are Annihilate if you think you outspeed, a Loma Lola if not. Annihilate so you think you outspeed. Let's see. You do. Down goes the Dragonite. How do you not win with Rage Fist? How much does Chi and Pal take? Dude, this is a strong Pokemon versus a very, very weak Pokemon in your max attack adamant. Rage Fist with 150 base power. That, was, that shit does 50? All right. Rillaboom comes out, actually. Rillaboom comes out. That is interesting. I assume he goes for the knockoff here. You might sack Breloom. You sack Breloom. This is a good play. Wood Hammer. Down goes the Breloom. Uh, Annihilate comes back in. We're going to U-turn. Massive damage on this Pokemon. Loma Lola comes in. Woodhammer. Down goes the Loma Lola, but also down goes this Pokemon. And now you unfortunately cannot lock a move to win? I mean, you have to lock Rage Fist and hope that the GM Pauk, like clicks Icicle Crash and misses or something, right? Yeah. That's a heartbreaker. Wait, but that's 200 base power Rage Fist now. Now what are we looking at with the rolls? Now what are we looking at? 65 to 76, doesn't matter. You're going to lose, no matter what, huh? Down goes the Slitherwing. She and Pao, I assume you just have Sucker Punch. Tower Water? Rage Fist? Mmm, wait, did that kill? If he was, let's assume non-banned. Yeah, that killed anyway. Dang, that can't, it still came down to the wire, Trey. It still came down to the wire. Rock Move wins. Rock Move wins, but I don't... Do, <laughs> Maybe just rocks. Rock move does not win. Rock move does just as much as raised fist. Star, shut up. Rage fist does not reset when you swap. That is why Annihilate is such a good Pokemon. If that killed, I won because I lived a hit from Sheehan. Yes, I I think I agree with you. Uh, unless they were, I don't know, because Crunch into Sucker did kill you when you were locked into the move, right? Did they were they banded? Were they banded? If they were banded, then yeah, you did win. Vinny raid, original 151 raid. Yo, what's up, guys? Yo, shout outs. Thank you, guys. We're just watching some uh, some of my draft league battles, some of my community's draft league battles. It's called JJDL. If you guys don't know what draft league is, be sure to check it out on my channel. I've done things recently like BBR. Basically, it's like fantasy football. You pick 9 to 11 Pokemon and you battle. And 
I'm just watching through and we have 48 individual coaches. So we're watching 24 games today. We just got through our fifth game. It, you guys are showing amazing love right now. I appreciate you. The stream has been fantastic so far. We're about to go into game six and we're just, we're having a good time. We're just kind of existing. So thank you guys. Thank you for the raid. Thank you, Vinny. I appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody that showed up for it too. Thank you. Uh, but the next one that was requested was Denali. I'm going to go ahead and shoot Denali a DM because he said that he wanted to watch it. We are about to go into your game. And let me get the paste here. So let me pull this up. Let me pull this up. By the way, if you guys are new, be sure to just leave a like on the stream. It takes two seconds and it shows a lot of support. It means the world to me and helps push out this stream so other people can maybe find this stream. So thank you so much for the $5 in H. I really appreciate it. You guys are killing it today. I, I'm actually very overwhelmed with emotions with how much you guys have been killing it. I And yeah, Trey, Trey, I do not think you played bad by any means. I think the only play that uh, was questionable was the non-agility Ironmoth. But even then, I think your play was uh, defensible, defendable. I think maybe swapping out the Rillaboom, scouting for the Scarf on the Rillaboom would have been the play. But this one was Denali. So Denali's team, he has Spectre, Ditto, Ting Lu, Mew, Toad's Crow, and Annihilate. And it looks like his team, he has a... Sub Willow Hex Draining Kiss Spectre. We have a Scarf Ditto. We have a Whirlwind Dual Hazards Throat Chop on the Ting Lu. Uh, Mew with Psychic Taunt, U Turn, and Will O Wisp. So the whole, I assume the whole idea here is to get into a position to win with Spectre, which I like a lot. Uh, Spore Rapid Spin, Leaf Storm, and T Spikes. Toad's Cruel, really going for the, the toxic stuff. And I love it. I love it. That's how you're supposed to play Spectre. And Terra Fairy Taunt, Bulk Up, Rage Fist, and Drain Punch on the Annihilate. Yo. Trey, thank you so much for the $2, man. I appreciate you. You've been the most active member of the community, probably, uh, other than maybe SJ. So really, really big shout out to you. And you just keep donating. And I, I really appreciate it. We have 47 viewers now, guys. Thank you again, Vinny, for the raid. I really appreciate it. Again, if you have not already, be sure to leave a like, guys. It just supports the stream so much. It just supports the stream so much. It means so much here. We have an awesome community. And we're just gonna, we're gonna go ahead and get into this game. So Denali, I like your team a lot. It looks like you're gonna try to poison everything, keep everything poisoned. Uh, T spikes look great. Great tusk obviously is the only downside of that. And if he has boots, great tusk, which he might be into this matchup, just to ra guarantee some rapid spins off, could be a little bit of a problem. It looks like Volcarona does you really dirty if Volcarona gets set up. Gonna have to keep the Ting Lu in the back for that. And obviously you have the Ditto to revenge that. So I'm actually really curious to see how this game goes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hop in here. So we are going to see, I assume, Ting Lu lead. We are going to see Ting Lu lead into the Grafai Eye. Uh, as we see a knockoff come off, there's no more leftovers. And we're going to see probably Hazards. We're going to see Stealth Rock come up. So uh, I do think Somebody I probably went for Spike just because Great Tusk, whenever it comes in, Spike damage is going to be more than Stealth Rock. And obviously, Great Tusk is going to be able to spin pretty easily. Uh, but we're going to see Bronzong come in here. And do a throat chop, do massive That's damage to the Bronzong because we're going to see another rock come out. And we're going to see a whirlwind into the Hydreigon, which is perfect. That is actually exactly what you want right now. Yo, thank you so much for the subscription, guys. We're getting a lot of subs coming in here, and I appreciate you guys for it. We're actually almost at 1,700 right now. So if we could get, if we could push past 1,700 in this stream, that would be insane. I've, I already consider this. Oh, we actually just hit 1,700. Shout out to everybody who just subbed. Holy shit. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Uh, but we are going to see Whirlwind EQ is so, so nice there. Where is my logo? Shut up, Star. You are not getting a logo. Uh, we're going to see the Hydreigon come in. Perfect situation for this Team Lu. Don't run Whirlwind Team. This dude, Star, thinks that offensive Team Lu is the move. And offensive Team Lu is great, but it... it I think Hazard Stack, especially into Spectre or Wincon, is definitely the move. So don't listen to what Star says. This dude got juice takes. Hydreigon's going to come in. I assume the U-turn comes out. U-turn's going to come out. We're going to see Great Tusk come out, try to get a spin off. I can only assume ha Spikes are going to come up here. And we're going to see the Annihilate come in to block the spin. So this is fantastic. You actually have a really good spin blocker. Uh, and he does actually... I completely forgot because I saw the Terra Fairy that this is probably one of the best spin blockers in the game. So we're going to see the spin get blocked and we are going to just have hazards up. And you're actually set up in a, like, so 
I'm a little bit biased because hazard stack is probably my favorite way to play competitive singles, especially I think spec Shiri plays into it so well. So I think this is awesome. This is awesome. Yo, everybody is popping off in the chat right now. Thank you guys. Oh yeah, I roll my tongue on Hydroigen. We are proud of you. Thank you, Bear. Do not... So Baba is our cat. That's why she said that. Tinglu is very strong and it has really good offensive typing. It has Kruko Delay's offensive typing. Uh, so we're going to see the Grafai Eye come in on the Terra Fairy. Annihilate. Annihilate's going to go for the bulk up. Does this have Switcheroo? Encore. Encore. We're going to see Encore from the Grafai Eye. How does he take advantage of this, though? Somebody sign me! Belly Drum on Azu. Thank you so much for the subscription, guys. Again, thank you, Cody Summers, for the subscription. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm back. Did we do Mountain Mans? We did not do Mountain Mans yet. You did miss a stream or a, a raid from Original 151 Vinny, and we had we had 50 concurrent viewers. It was it's crazy. It's awesome. The love that you guys are showing me this stream. Um, also, I gotta write down what stream uh, Zapdos Denali versus. Okay, so how does he take advantage of this? So Ditto comes out. How did he take advantage of that? I'm curious what his play is now. Parting shot into something. Toxic. Okay, okay, that makes sense then. That makes sense for sure. So Grafai is gonna come out, gonna eat up, up that toxic. That was a good uh Grafai eye pivot there. Good ditto pivot there. As we see, Azumarill is gonna come in on this Grafai eye. And the knockoff's gonna come off. So are we gonna see the citrus berry? We're gonna see citrus, so that tells you that he is definitely a belly drum. Might even try to go for it here. Liquidation. 45%! Holy crap! I wanna see Mountain Man win. How many games have we watched so far? This is game six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is game six. Yep. So we're about a quarter of the way through so far. Uh, we are going to see a Willow has come out. I do. I love this mute into the Azu side. I really like your team, Denali. I really do, man. We're going to see the Azu be burned. Azu's kind of taken out of the match now. Hydroigon's going to come in, and we're going to see a Psychic come off. So good pivot into Hydroigon on that. Uh, I think we were a U-turn. Right, and we're not going to U-turn, fearing a potential Scarf, Hydroigon. We're going to see the U-turn come out, a crit, which is a little bit unfortunate now that we don't have leftovers on this Tinglu. We are a little, little weakened here now. We are going to see Great Tusk come in, and it can get that Rapid Spin off now, but it actually doesn't. It doesn't go for the Rapid Spin. It goes for the KO on the Annihilate, potentially, so I'm, I'm very shocked to see that. Very shocked to see no uh, attempted Rapid Spin. Are we going to get it off here? We're not. We're just going to take out the Annihilate. Is that Bandon? That did so much damage to Annihilate. That is so much damage. I didn't expect that. So Spectre is going to come in here. I assume go for the sub. Because I think we were sub Hex Draining Kiss. Are we going to win with Spectre right here? Let me make sure I'm not talking out of my ass. I think sub was the play there if we had it. Spectre. Where did the pace go? Uh, we were sub. I do... Personally, think that sub was the play there, but I think you would have actually, you might have just won the game, maybe if you got boosted up. Mm, maybe not because you were worried about Grafai I hard coming in on. That's fair, actually. Yeah, you were probably worried about Grafai I hard coming in and clicking Encore. So I get it. Yeah, there are 24 battles. John looking great today. Thank you, Mingo. I appreciate it. We're not having a six hour stream. It's going to start picking up really fast. I also, there was like 30 minutes where I was uh, thanking everybody for all the donations so far. So we see Azu come in. Azu's going to Aqua Jet do absolutely nothing to this Ditto and have one more hit left as Azu is going to get taken down there. Bronzong's going to come in. What is it going to do? Body press. Tinglu comes in. Are we going to see a body press potentially? A gyro ball. Tinglu's going to eat that up. Probably get another spike up. Actually go for the throat shot. Do 40% to that Bronzong. And Body Press takes the Tinglu out. This is prime position to go get a kill with Spectre, right? Unless you don't want to take Rocks damage. I mean, I don't, I don't see what else you go into. I don't see what else you go into. You got to go Spectre. Spectre is your only offense at this point. And you are going to go for the sub. Oh, Gyro breaks sub for sure, right? Yeah, Gyro breaks sub for sure. You just got to take this out. You got to go for the Hex. Take this out. Uh, Grafai is going to come in probably regardless here. I can only assume... Unless Scarf Hydroigon makes sense. That makes sense. Ditto's going to come out, and you're going to be able to see this Hydra set, which is fantastic. Dark Pulse comes out 24%. Uh, Draco, goodbye Hydroigon. I am actually... I guess you had to give that Pokemon up if you... Yeah, you had to give that Pokemon up because Grafia can still lock Spectre into a move, and you can still potentially win that way. Uh, maybe I would have got rid of the Great Tusk because you're not getting rid of Hazards regardless. And it's outsped by everything. And you see a Willow Bulky Mew. You see these Pokemon. Uh, Spectre can Oko. I probably would have given up the Great Tusk there. 
I probably would have given up the Great Tusk. We're going to see Great Tusk come in now. I think this dies. No. Oh, not quite. Oh, and we get the Rapid spinoff. Dang. That's unfortunate. Uh, Draco is going to be able to take out the Great Tusk, though. And we're going to see Volcarona come in. Volcarona is in prime. It's prime Volcarona time now. You have to switch this Ditto out. Uh, you die to rocks, though. Yeah, you die to rocks. I, you, you go hard Spectre. You're in prime position to lose to Volcarona now, unfortunately. I feel like we were supposed to save the Ditto, maybe, if we knew it didn't kill. Down goes Spectre. This wins, right? This just wins. Unless we're uh, Akka. Dang. Yeah, Volcarona. He positioned his Volcarona really well. I feel like maybe the thing that I would have done differently is maybe here, instead of Draco Wing, just so you still have the assurance against the... Uh, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Just just so and i saw in the chat you said you weren't sure it or your calc was wrong you're not sure how that didn't kill it, hindsight's 2020 probably should have just went like uh toes cool there right but it, it to keep the assurance versus the vocal run i think you would have pretty much won the game at that point but it is what it is man it is what it is uh you turn with ditto versus hydra into toads that's fair ditto should have gone for the draco crit maybe man yeah, so that's going to be it. That's going to be it for the Denali game. We are moving right along here. We're going to go ahead and go into Panda's game. Panda and FLZM. I believe that is Moltres. And I actually know a little bit about this game because I did stats for it earlier. I don't really remember it, but we're going to go ahead and hop in here. Uh, we have Brute Bonnet, Walking Wake, Regieleki, Garganako, Espathra, and for some reason, a Wigglytuff on my screen versus a Palafin, Guja, Florges, Rillaboom, Thundy T and a several ledge. By the way, guys, I see we have 41 viewers right now and only 25 likes. Go ahead and leave a like if you haven't already. It's absolutely free and helps support the stream a ton. Actually, I lied. I just refreshed my page and we have 42 likes. So thank you guys. I don't know why my shit was uh, not updating there. I appreciate it though. So I don't know why this Wiggly Tough's on my screen. All right, see you, Star. Have fun at Yu-Gi-Oh, man. I don't know why I see this Wiggly Tough on my screen, but uh, so first initial thoughts. I'm a li I. I assume, honestly, it, you got to be physical walking wake, right? Gudra, Florges, you have to be physical walking wake. Uh, Spoth, I believe this is his Terra Captain. I believe it was Terra... Let me see if he DM'd me the paste, actually. He did. He did DM me the paste. So we'll actually just be able to see. We'll just be able to see right now. Uh, we have a Brute Bonnet, that is Spore Seed Bomb, Synthesis, and Sucker Punch. We have a Walking Wake, which is physical. DD, Aqua Jet, Dragon Claw, and Liquidation. I think that set does really well here. Uh, Regilek, he's going to be Rapid Spin, Ancient Power, Light Screen, and Volt Switch. Garganako is Salt Cure, Zin Headbutt, Recover, and Stealth Rocks. I fail to see what Zin Headbutt is for. If you are here, FLDM, I'm curious what the Zin Headbutt is for. Uh... <laughs> Wiggly was my only answer to Calm Mind Hoopa. Thank you for the two dollars. I guess so. Oh, your AV Wiggly. I didn't even get to it yet. Your AV Wiggly and your Focus Sash as Spot Throw with Lumina Crash, D Gleam, E Ball, and Protect. That makes sense. While your Boost uh, Rapid Spin Reggie Alecki then, and then D Gleam, Ice Beam, Dark Pulse, and Shadow Ball. Damn, I I feel bad for you if this was your only answer for uh for Hoopa. So uh, Walking Wake is a fantastic win con here. I think Walking Wake does. Phenomenal. I also think on the uh, opposition side, I think Serral Edge can go a little bit crazy. Uh, I can get a little bit out of hand if we play to chip things with things like Palafin, Rillaboom, and Thundee. Then Serral Edge can be in a really good spot really, really quickly. So, no Wigglytuff slander. Hey, man, I have Wigglytuff in the league. I don't like it. We're going to go ahead and start here. We see Regieleki into the Palafin as we see the light screen on the Thunderous switch in. That's really cool that you brought light screen knowing that Thunderous would always switch in on you. And we're going to see Ancient Power 48%. Guys, I have talked shit on Regieleki's name for too long. I am sorry, Regieleki. You did 48%. And we took 34, though, through a light screen. We're going to Ancient Power again. No boost, right? No boost. You turn on the Thundee. Living on 3 HP or 3% HP as the floor just is going to come in. Probably a Volt Switch here. Big Volt Switch on the floor just. In comes the Wigglytuff, who is now useless because there is no Hoopa Unbound here. And what does Wigglytuff do in return to this Pokemon, though? What is our set again? D Gleam, Ice Beam, Dark Pulse, and Thunderbolt. The answer is nothing. Wigg Wigglytuff is here to take a hit and immediately switch out. Uh, Walking Wake is going to switch in here on the floor just as it calm minds. Uh, I assume Walking Wake was here to call the double into the Ledge. I can only imagine. 
I can only imagine that's what we were trying to call. That mom was a demon in my one and only Radical Red run. Red Yalecki was broken in Radical Red because just getting hidden power made it really good. Uh, Wigglytuff might be the new Quaquavel, but Wigglytuff sucks and is not supposed to be good. Quaquavel is supposed to be good. Uh, but we're going to see the, the Walking Wake, obviously, get the pivot wrong there, unfortunately. Uh, are we going to stay in? We are going to stay in. We're going to tear. Oh, we're Terra Water. We're going to go ahead and Terra Water. And we're going to Dragon Dance. Ooh, ooh. We two a KO this with Liquidation, right? Moonblast. We chew ish. I assume we just go for two liquidations here, try to get the two a KO. 90? So many Pokemon are doing so much damage than I anticipated. This is crazy. This is crazy. We're going to see Moonblast. You're going to live that. Yeah, it got a high roll that time too, it looks like. Uh, Walking Wake does crazy. Unfortunately, now. Because Calm Mind Floor just did do you dirty, I don't think you made the wrong play staying in and dragon dancing. But unfortunately, that was most certainly, in my opinion, your best win con. And now you're at 11% HP when Palafin can just come in and revenge you. And we're looking a little tough on that front. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have Terra'd is the only thing I could say. That way Palafin Jet Punch might have not killed you. Uh, but I, at the end of the day, it probably doesn't matter. You're going to be at 17% HP. It probably doesn't matter. Uh, Palafin comes in. You, you, you might, you might even just want to save this straight up, to be honest. You might want to go into uh, Brubani here, potentially. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, you do want to go ahead and go into Brubani here. As Jet Punch comes out and does 17%, there's no way in hell. Walking Wick only took 17% if we didn't tear them. No chance. No chance. And your couch that killed? Yeah, I, I don't, so that's why we tear them. Okay, I gotcha. So, Brubani, Palafin's going to come in. We see the Gujar switch out. That makes a lot of sense. Sap Sipper, I assume Sap Sipper is going to come out. And now the Great Wigglytuff. Yep, Great Wigglytuff is going to come out. Sludge Bomb does zero to it. But unfortunately, Deagle might do even less than that did. I'm going to be honest. Did 10% to the Serral Edge. What do, we are not standing and clicking Shadow Ball, correct? Because if this is weakness policy, with Flame Charge, you lose the game. Right now. Well, you have Sash. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. You have sashed this, so I guess you might be okay. Don't be weakness policy. Dark Pulse, I mean, not Shadow Ball. He wasn't He wasn't weakness policy. That could have ended very, very badly. So we are Gar Garganacle now. Um, by the way, why were you uh, Why were you using Headbutt on the Garganacle? Was there something that I missed that was on the team? Because I, I only know these six Pokemon. I don't know what else they have off the top of my head. So, um... We see the Rillaboom switch out. I assume Stolt Cure. Stolt Cure is going to come out and you at least get some... Oh, Covert Cloak Rillaboom. That is actually fire. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Brute Bonnet. We're going to see the knockoff come off. Ooh, that was that was a very... Hold on. What were we in with? Garganacle? That was a very risky switch because if he U-turned, you died. I'm almost positive. We're going to now go Walking Wake on the U-turn. Live on 1 HP. Force in the Pallop and now we got to sack the, the Walking Wake, right? We don't need the Walking Wake anymore. I assume... I assume we don't need this anymore. We just sack the walking wake. Yeah. Value health on Brubonnet a little bit more. We go Brubonnet now. Gudra comes back in and we double into Garganacle. Okay. So it actually looks like you're in a really tough spot to break Gudra ever. What is a spot for a set? Lumina Crash, Dazzling Gleam, Energy Ball, and Protect. It looks like we're in a really tough spot. Oh, Lumina Crash. Lumina Crash plus D Gleam can maybe do it. Um, oh, I, ha I haven't had music playing this whole time, guys. Why didn't you tell me? Why did you not tell me? I just loaded it back up. I forgot to click the loop button, so it's just been me talking. Kurt, if you're editing this in the video, put some music over that bad boy. Uh, but we're going to see... So, a Spother can definitely win this game, especially with the, with the fact that there's no hazards, right? Uh, a Spother actually looks really good to win this game. It's just a little tough because you can't go down to Sash because of Palafin existing. So, we're going to see Garganacle go for Rocks. Fantastic. I actually really like that. That I assume this is going to be Boots. And, but now you find out if Serilege's boots or not. Rillaboom's gonna go for knockoff into you. Take some Rocky Helmet Chip, and we're gonna go for what? Recover? Just a scout? Okay, I don't necessarily disagree with that. Drum beating? What are we gonna do? Recover scout again? Uh, oh, wait, yeah, I didn't even realize SJ. Good call out. Another overgrow Rillaboom. This has to be misclicks, right? This has to be misclicks. Like, you have to just not be clicking him prep. That's fine to forget it. But I don't see a reason to ever be overgrow over grassy terrain unless you have an earthquake abuser, maybe. But there's n unless Gudra is your earthquake abuser for some reason, I guess. 
You're supposed to be talking. Wait, is the music too loud now? No. No, we're good. You guys are tricking me. I can't even find my headset stand. So, yeah, I don't know what the what the deal with the overgrow Rillaboom is. I don't know what the... Uh, um, Espathra is my emergency check to Halucha, Serulich, or Hoopa. Halucha, or Espathra is now your win con at this point in the game. Espathra is the only way you win this game. Uh, we're going to see Zen Headbutt come out. Uh, the reason I'm recovering because I thought he had wood hammer is going to kill himself with recoil. That makes sense. Yo, what's up, Aaron? I assume that's how you pronounce your name. If it's not, I apologize. I great, I very much apologize. Uh, we're going to see drum beating come out. Another recover, I assume. Did you ever say why you were Zen Headbutt? Did I miss that? Terrifying Sarah Ledge. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, we're going to just get past this. Everybody hold hands. We're going to get past this Rillaboom together. We have five recovers left. And he has no recovery because he's not grassy terrain. So we are going to actually somehow 1v1 this Rillaboom potentially. Maybe. I'll skip past a couple turns. We go Brute Bonnet here on the drum beating. PP stalling the drum beatings. I understand. Sucker. Unfortunately, does not kill the Rillaboom. You turn actually does not kill you in return. I did not expect that. Uh, Serlich is going to come back in. Are you going to stay in and swords the interest or sports in case? I assume that's what was happening there. Terra fighting, and we go with Spathra, and we protect. Okay, okay, and we're going to go for the Lumina Crash here. And do you win the game? No, I want to say no. Palafin comes out here. You might. You might. Uh, does Zinheba Garg even do anything to bulk up Serilege? That's a good point. Bulk up Serilege did go crazy. Yo, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. I'm glad you found me through Aim, man. Aim did a great job plugging all of the BPR guys when he was in it. But uh, Espathra, in comes the Gudra. Lumina, you just Lumina crash, right? That did no damage. That did no damage. So at this point in the game, I, I actually think it's unfortunately impossible for you to win, right? Unless, I mean, your, your whole the whole way you win this, I guess, you got to get a boost with Regieleki, right? I mean, Gudra being chipped, actually, maybe Regieleki can win the game. Maybe. Maybe Regieleki can clean up. Oh, wait, 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 wait. They went for Sludge Bomb. Wait, that was a throw. That was a throw. So now you get even more damage. I feel like if they just didn't, if they went for Draco there and killed you, then you just lost, probably. Most of the time, I feel like you just lost. Depending on if they had a move for Garganacle or not, right? I, I don't necessarily understand that. So we're going to see the switch out. Thunderous, it was Boots. Thunderous is going to go down here. But now Gudra takes rocks and it's it's like one hit away from being in range of Regieleki. Palafin's going to come out here. Uh, down goes the Espathra. And we're going to see Garganacle come in. And the Rillaboom's going to die, Okay. Well, we're going to recover first, and then the Rillaboom's going to die. 52% that time. Goodbye, Rillaboom. Gudra's going to come in. Regieleki comes in. And then, unfortunately, we are going to get this game wrapped up. So they did have Surf for Garganok. So, unfortunately, we are eventually going to get to the point to where Panda is going to win that one. So how many games have you watched today? Let's see. I think seven or eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven so far. 252, Palafin Hero, Jet Punch, Reggie Alecki. Yeah, not terrain. That's the, the funniest part, Owen. That's the second Reggie Alecki we've seen today, and neither have been terrain. I'm not sure why. And I'm not sure why. I don't know why. We, and it has to be just a, a, a misclick, right? You would assume. Okay, so next up, we're actually going against. We're going with Nick, one of my best friends, Nick, a.k.a. Michael, versus Wawalt. Wawalt requested this one, so we'll stay on Wawalt's side. Uh, and we have one more game. Uh, this is the last game, actually, that we have in queue. So if you guys want to see any of your games, please let me know, and we'll go ahead and queue them up. We'll go ahead and queue them up if you guys have them. Um, so it looks like we have Skeledurge, Urshifu Rapid. I think it's Rapid. No, that might be Urshifu Single. Uh, Azu, Scizor, Quag, Thundee, and then we have I Am Valiant, Heatran, Torn I, or Torn T, excuse me, Rotom Wash, and Nick's team is insane. Toad's Cruel and Zoroark, Hisui. 
powerful matchup. I saw the video. H, let's get some H in chat. But well, go ahead and plug your video if you, if it'll allow you to. And if it doesn't allow you to, send it to me on Discord, and I will plug your video for you right now. Everybody, check out Walt. He's uploading this season. Walt's awesome. Fantastic member of the community. I I love Walt. I love the the attitude that he brings. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and hop in here. So I looking at Nick's side of things. I think. Yo, thank you so much for the five dollars, man. Holy shit. Uh, in my opinion, biggest mistake was letting Walking Wake go so low and not synthesis on Brew Bonnet when he U-turned. I also could have—I have traded for Scovilla now. Okay, that's cool. That adds something for your Sun Core. Um, yeah, man. I mean, definitely. I think because in my opinion, Walking Wake was definitely your best win con that game. You were in a little bit of a shitty spot with the floor just calm minded for sure. Uh, and I, I don't necessarily disagree with what you did, but it, after Walking Wake went down, it was hard to find yourself back into a point to where you could win the game with what you had left. Uh, can we get the Tottenham two cannon game after this? Is that Tottenham two cannon? Who is that? Is that versus you? Sign me. Let me see. Zapdos replays. Oh no, that's recaps. Actually, the next game we're gonna watch after this one is gonna be Tony's game. Somebody, Owen, if you're still here, text Tony and tell him we're gonna watch his game here in a second. Uh, didn't have a lot of depth, but it shouldn't take long. Okay, Kaki, we'll watch your game or Kaki. I, I'm not sure how to say it. I still, even though you're awesome, I appreciate you in this community. I uh, zap those replays. We'll throw yours on before Tony's since you requested it. We'll throw yours on before Tony's since we requested it. Uh, I'll pass you my team when you get to my match. Tough to say I got out prepped, but I did. Uh, if you want to go ahead and send me your pace, that's fine. Do you want me to queue up your game as well? Okay, so we'll, we'll go back to this one. We'll go ahead and jump into this one. So looking at this matchup, obviously Urshifu does really well into Nick, who only or into Michael outsynced, who only has Fairy type Iron Valiant. Uh, I think if Awoke can position himself early with this Urshifu, if it's not his win con, then it does fantastic. Obviously, Thunderous also does really well into this matchup. Ground type Toad's Cruel uh, gets you turned on for free, and then he can get into Urshifu. You turn again, but he's kind of in the cycle, right? Skeletor is also really good in this matchup. It's unaware for, I assume, the Tornadus. I think, is he Terra Water? I, I don't know. Are you, uh, that is the Tottenham 2 Cannon game? Okay, 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 okay. My game is not very interesting, but I'm gonna put it on Q. Okay, let's go ahead and grab Bleedle's game as well. Let's see. Pay versus Bleedle. And we'll throw that one in the queue as well. So now we got four in the queue. So uh, looking at Walt's team, like Skeletor's obviously got to be the wall for Tornadoes. I think he, if he positions himself early, uh, he has a lot of momentum. And maybe he's Belly Drum Azu. Belly Drum Azu does do really well here. You just have to chip the Rotom, put it in range of a plus six Aqua Jet, and you can set up on a couple of different things. Uh, but he, you might even have to be Lum over Citrus this matchup because of potential Willow Heatran, Willow this, Spore this. Like, you can set up on a couple of different things, but you probably need to be Lum probably need to be Lum. So we'll go ahead and hop in here. We see a Quagsire lead and a Torn lead. Torn's gonna do fantastic in this matchup. I assume we just go Heart Skeleton Dirge here. Oh, we're gonna stay in and we're gonna plot. We're gonna be actually plot into the Unaware Dirge matchup. And Unaware Quag, okay. And we see a Toxic Miss. Ah, I am sorry about that, Wawalt. That definitely, that actually definitely blows because this tornado is obviously, uh, you want Toxic on your regen mods if you can. So we're gonna see another plot getting greedy when there are, so, also, outsync Nick. He is uh, he's newer to draft too. He hasn't played in like five years. It's been a long time. So whenever there's two unaware Pokemon, you probably don't want to be plot into them. You probably just want to be like a specs or sharp beak type of uh, of tornadoes or maybe even just uh, boots pivot in this matchup. But we're gonna plot again. We're gonna see the toxic come out here. Uh, and this might, this is probably just water absorb in this matchup with Skeletor's the unaware one, I assume. We're gonna see the hurt. Yeah, Hurricane does kill the Quag there, but now the torrent is toxic. I assume Skeletor comes out. Thunderous comes out here. And we're actually not, we are not going to be, uh, what's it called? Not going to be Scarf. Are we going to kill the, we're going to, we're going to U-turn. We're going to u what an insane play, Wawol. I feel like you did not have to overplay that because uh, when the threat's in your face, you probably want to attack it, right? You probably want to attack it. Wawol just DM'd his paste. Okay, let's see what Wawol's got, what Wawol's cooking up. Uh, we see a Skeledurge with, uh, he is unaware, Torch Song, Hex, Slack Off, Roar. 
Uh, Live War versus Shifu, okay. With, and that's it, that is his win con. Trailblaze, Wicked Blow, Close Combat, Swords Dance. We do have the Belly Drum Azu with Aqua Jet Play Rough and Ice Spinner. Uh, Scizor is going to be Bandit. He is going to be AV Thunderous. And then he's Water Absorb Quag. So again, I do really wholeheartedly believe we should have Thunderbolted there. But uh, we're going to go ahead and go now into Skeldridge, which is probably the best check to this that there can be. And we're going to be U-Turn. Uh, in the future, Michael, probably don't... I highly regret... Not regret... I highly advise against being U-turn on setup sets because I don't, I don't even think setup was necessarily needed in this matchup, but because now you've lost like all of your progress and I, I you probably would have switched out in general, but I, I don't know if I agree with the being U-turn in general in this matchup, but we're going to see Rotom and the Hex comes out for the Skeledurge here. I'm off to bed. It's like midnight for me. Thanks so much for coming to the stream, man. I really do appreciate it. And thanks so much for all the donations. I appreciate it. You really didn't have to do that, man. I appreciate it so much. We're going to see a Hydro come off from the Rotom. Scizor is going to be able to break the Rotom sub. Who, sub Rotom. That, that's pretty cool. With leftovers. Okay. And the, the Urshifu is going to come in. Oh, and we're going to see Protect. No! Nick! He hasn't played Janae yet. He doesn't know about Wicked or about Unseen Fist. No, no, no. Trailblaze. Ah, through Protect. He learned. He learned. Oh no! Are we gonna see a swords dance here? No way we're gonna see a demon sword. A demon sword dance from a wall. Down goes the toad's cruel. What do we have coverage for? We don't have coverage for Valiant. So Valiant can come in. It might even be booster energy and force us out. Yeah, it is gonna be booster energy and force us out regardless. So in comes the Skeledridge, which is also a pretty, pretty damn good check for Valiant. Skeledridge had such a good matchup, man. Such a good matchup. In comes the Heatran. And we're going to see a Torch Song come off. Obviously, Flash Fire is going to proc. We're going to switch probably into Azu? Into Thunderous. AV Thunderous. Earth Power. Okay. Okay. Good call with Wolt. Brick Break comes out 26%. And Magma Storm is going to pick up the KO on the Thunderous. Probably time. Because we can't touch Heatran with Skeletor. It's probably time to go back into Urshifu, huh? We're actually going to go for Azu. Are we Lumberry? We are not. I don't know if I agree with the Azu play because Willow is, is more than likely coming off here. And he's Terra Water. Oh, he's Terra. Oh, Flash Cannon did, did actually way more than I expected. So we are going to Belly Drum here. We're going to see up to 35%. Uh, Aqua Jet does not kill this Heatran. Flash Cannon will kill this Azu. Uh, we are going to see the Aqua Jet come out as I assume Flash Cannon. We're going to just kill the Azu. Okay, so that was, that was still a cool way of dealing with it uh, rather than being Willow Wisp. Uh, I assume we see Urshifu come in here. Urshifu has to come in. Probably should have went Urshifu in the first place just because, I guess, maybe not because Rotom was probably in range of plus six. Uh, but if we knew he was Terra Water, maybe we shouldn't have went Ozzy right there. Maybe we should have went into Urshifu, forced him out. Uh, but we are going to see Torn switch in. This is dead, right? Trailblaze plus Wicked Blow. This has to be dead. I, I, I refuse to believe this isn't dead. I, yeah, this dies. Valiant's gonna come in. Okay, the music's still going. If the music messes up or it's too loud, let me know, guys. Uh, Skeletor comes out on Valiant. We're gonna see Heatran come in as the double into Urshifu. Demon double from a wall as Urshifu is gonna pick up another KO. Down goes the Rotom. And we're gonna Trailblaze again and force the Iron Valiant to think twice about coming in. It has to come in, though. Iron Valiant has to come in. As we're gonna see Scizor come in on the Iron Valiant. It is going to live. We got a U turn here, right? We know he's not uh, flame body. We U turn, do massive damage, go back into the Urshifu, and we trailblaze, right? Zoroark. We trailblaze just to keep the Iron Valiant at bay. If we were quite simply last move poison jab, I don't know if that killed Iron Valiant, but if it did, then you would have won the game, which is crazy. You going for the sword stance because he has to, because otherwise he doesn't beat the Iron Valiant because he doesn't have coverage for it. And we are going to unfortunately go down, and I don't think Wawalt has enough juice to win this game now. Unfortunately, maybe actually can Scizor do it? I'm assuming no based on the switch out there. We're gonna see the earth power. Good play on Nick's part. Good middle ground. And we are going to see Skeletor slack off, I assume. We're gonna see a couple turns of this, I would assume. But I think we will unfortunately cannot win from here. Right? Yeah, we will cannot win from that position. Heatran is going to be able to clean it up for Nick. So good game to you guys. We watched, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is eight games so far. Eight games so far. By the way, if you guys have not already, go ahead and leave a like on the video. I think we're closing in on 50. We passed 50 likes. So thank you guys so much for that. I really appreciate that. That is insane how many people are watching this shit. 
That is insane. So, uh, next game here, we do have a couple more in queue. We're gonna go ahead and watch Bic. Bic's game is gonna be next. Wait, who, who recommended this game? Who recommended that we watch this game? I wanna make sure we, we watch the side of whoever asked for it. Did someone recommend this game? Or did I just click on this one? I don't see any recommendations. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Are you guys playing Minecraft right now? Uh, we'll go ahead and watch this one. I don't know who recommended it. I can't find it. So we're going to watch the side of Bic because Owen shouted, I love Bic. And then after this one, we're going to watch the game of the week, Tony and uh, Tony and Flapple. So we'll go ahead and jump in here. We have Quackle Ball, Tornadus, Deancey, uh, Toxtricity, Chi Yu, and Orthworm versus Sandy Shocks, Volcanion, Team Lu, Zoroark, Meow Squad, and Espeon. This was the team, I think I said that uh, it was more of a VGC team. It would have been great in VGC. I think we're Terra, Team Lu. It looks like Quackle Ball, if Volcanion ever gets chipped, wins the game. Just straight up. Quackle Ball goes crazy here. So we're going to go ahead and hop in here, and we're going to see what happens. Meow Squad, a lead into the Torn lead. Fantastic lead from Bic, and... 94% to the Hisuian Zoroark. As we're gonna see Bitter Malice come out. Does that kill? Does not quite kill. Tornadus is, oh, and we're Life Orb, so Zoroark's gonna go down here. Uh, in comes the Sandy Shocks with the Spadaf boost. Interesting, that must be to help versus Chi Yu, I would assume. Uh, and Tox Let me just make sure I got that shit right. Toxtricity comes in on the Sandy Shocks. Also, I assume Spadaf is for the Toxtricity. Why do we not go like Orthworm to get rocks up? I guess Orthworm does t doesn't enjoy taking Thunderbolts. I guess you didn't really have a great pivot. I still think maybe Orthworm would have been the play, but also if it didn't take two Thunderbolts, then maybe not. Uh, but we are just going to see rocks go up here. Uh, the people really need to see the Quaxwell game thing went crazy, but the next game is going to be Quaxwell. The next game is going to be Quaxwell, so... Uh, no, okay, I, and I got your I got your DM khaki for the uh, khaki. Which one is it? <laughs> khaki, I got your DM for the pokey face. Whenever we get to you, we will throw that up. So we're going to see Gravity Sandy Shocks, which is here for... Oh, so Torn gets hit by Earth Power. Oh, does... No, I assume that doesn't go through Earthworm's abilities. So we are going to go ahead and see a Grass Knot. That does some pretty decent damage for a plus one. Uh, zap cannon gravity zap cannon sandy shocks holy shit uh, that guaranteed a kill for sure okay <laughs> was the moving on moving on diancy is gonna come in on this and missed zap cannon wait does zap can't does Gravity not make zap cannon 100% accurate? I thought that was the whole point. Why would we gravity then? Why would we gravity? We're gonna rock pulse with Dia? We're gonna toxicity here? Zap cannon, we chew that up. Zap cannon again? Are we not earth power? What's going on? I'm so confused. I am so confused. Why are we, are we not earth power? Toxicity boom burst, not quite killing the sandy shocks. Zap cannon, what is happening? Sandy Shocks finally gets put out of his fucking misery because he was just flailing about clicking Zap Cannon. Espeon's gonna come in. Power Gym, not quite gonna be able to take out the Toxtricity. This is one of those plays where I don't necessarily think uh, you had to make that play because you have a good check to... Uh, I, I wouldn't say good check, but you have a switch in a pivot to Chiyu and Ting Lu. So I don't know if necessarily we needed to make that play. Um, but good on Bic for recognizing that he could stay in there. And we're going to see the Volt switch here into, I assume, D.I.N.C. Di now? It's a 1.67 times boost. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. Sandy Shocks got put out of his fucking misery. D.I.N.C. comes in on this Espeon. Power Gym's going to come out. Uh, we're going to see a Rock Polish. So, Rock Polish is pretty cool in this matchup. I don't think we outspeed Meowskarada at plus two, no? Because we don't outspeed Espeon. We definitely, we surely don't outspeed Meowskarada. And this also might be Scarf. Because it's only clicking Power Gym. No way you don't have Psychic to do more damage to this Diancie, right? Uh, if you don't know, by the way, 
psychic so there are moves called stab moves if you use a move of the same type it basically does more damage and it's always better to click a move like that into something in this situation it's just always better to click psychic it would have done significantly more damage than power gym so unless you were scarf i have no idea if you were diane's gonna pick up the ko on the espion in comes meow scarada Flower Chick's gonna come out, that's gonna kill the... Oh, crit, unfortunate. Uh, Diancie goes down, in comes the Chiyu. I assume we're gonna see a Dark Pulse or a Fire move, maybe. Uh, those are the two options. What the fuck? I, this, this game has confused me the most so far. How did that Oko of Volcanion? Hi, bear. Yeah. Yo, what's going on, Central? Uh, I don't know how that Oko to be... I gotta see the calc on this. Chiyu, Canyon, Dark Pulse, Specs, Modest, no versus No Bulk is the only thing that I could assume. I can, you had to be no bulk Volcanion for that to kill, and he had to be Specs Modest. He did, I guess he didn't have to be Modest, it was a roll if he wasn't Modest, but you had to be quite literally no bulk. Uh, we're gonna see Ting Lu come in here, this is the Terramon by the way. Uh, I assume we're gonna see no Terra. Yeah, we see a double trying to get some kills and Toxtricity is gonna go down here to Meow Skirata. I think Quackle Vol. I mean, Quackle Vol always beats the Ting Lu. I think you go, uh, obviously into Chiyu here. Oh, you go Quackle Vol. Do you live a Flower Trick? Are you Rindo? Or do you know that they're banded maybe based on the damage? That's definitely possible. We're gonna see a knockoff come off. They were Rindo anyway. It didn't matter. Aqua Step's gonna come off and the game's gonna be wrapped up. We're gonna see, oh, yeah, the game's gonna be wrapped up here. Oh, maybe not. Wait, why is this Ting Lu winning? Okay, it doesn't have a move to hit Earthworm. So we're gonna see Ting Lu get put out of his misery as well. And that was certainly a game. Um, who was, who was your opponent, Bic? Oh, this was Kaki. Kaki, so what was the, if you're still here, what was the thought process on the Gravity Sandy Shocks? And were you no Earth Power? Were you no Earth Power? And were you, uh, were you Scarf on your Espeon or potentially Specs? Is that why you kept clicking Power Jump? Or it might just, you might just be new and you might just not know about Stab. That's completely fine. But I am curious why, uh, excuse me, Gravity, if we were no Earth Power on, well, no, I didn't have Earth Power. I just didn't expect Tox. Okay. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, what was your last move then? You were, let's see, Stealth Rock, Gravity, Zap Cannon, and what was the last move? Scarf Espeon. Okay, so that's why you kept kept, kept clicking Power Gym. You also Scarf Meow Skirata. Okay. Okay. And hey, don't feel ashamed at all by any means. You still got four Pokemon. You still got four kills, right? And it's a learning experience at the end of the day. I think you said that you were originating from VGC, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, right? So it's all a learning experience, man. And if you need any help, pop in the server. Just ask. Just say, hey, I, I'm having a little bit of trouble with singles. I could use some some pointers or some tips. Or even you can reach out to me and I can help you a little bit. Oh, great. Kurt is here. Kurt is here. Hi. Hi, Kurt. Hi, Owen. Everyone say hi, John, in the chat. Everybody say hi, John, in the chat. But yeah, Kaki, don't. there's nothing to be ashamed of, especially if this is like your first draft league game, man. I promise you, you have nothing to be ashamed of. It's okay. It happens. There's a learning curve. There's good. Obviously, it's a learning curve coming from VGC, right? <laughs> no, I have no VGC experience, but thank you. Okay. Hey, man. I'm not done the cool. I'm deleting the thing I sent you. Kurt, I already updated it, uploaded it. You can't delete it. You can't delete it. Okay, well, again, Kaki, if you ever want some help building or anything, shoot me a message, man. Straight up. Everybody's saying hi, John. Owen, you don't own my chat. Guys, stop conforming to what Owen says. Guys, stop conforming to what Owen says. Owen does not own any of you. Uh, but we're going to go go ahead and go. Let's see. How many games was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was nine. What division was that? Hold on one second, guys. I got to find out what division that was.
Articuno. So that was nine. Big versus Taki. Oh, great. I'm producer of Resident VC, man. What's going on, Miles? Okay, anyway, so actually, I've decided we're going to save this one for the 12th game because it'll be the, th this will be 10th there'll be one in between if anybody has a game they want to see in between bleedle and uh a pay i believe this was pay in between their game and tony's game go ahead and submit it first person to say their game gets their game in but this is bleedle versus versus pay uh, we're gonna see urshifu glow king thundi Satitan, greninja and gastrodon versus iron bundle uh king gambit dash bunk quagsire cinderace and the decidui so i can only assume this titan's here to be this the bundle check it actually probably does it pretty well in evisa titan i would assume with thick fat probably just does the job really really well uh urshifu looks like it does really well i don't i don't remember who recommended this game so i'm gonna stick on bleedle's side unless who oh wait no pay is right there i think yeah pay you're right there so i, I we're switching to your side urshifu does great into mono dash bun fairy right Urshifu just does great. Thundi also does really good. I think Pei has definite, definite matchup here. Cinderace can get a little annoying. Choice Banded uh, U-Turns is going to be tough. Yeah, Choice Banded U-Turns is going to be tough. But I think I think Pei definitely has matchup here. Bundle is checked. King Gambit, if it's Terra, could get a little bit out of hand. But should be maintained pretty easily. So we're going to go ahead and jump in here. We're going to see Quag lead versus Gastro lead. I assume Rocks get traded here uh rocks rocks and spikes so we're gonna switch out here we're going to thunderous as quag is going to switch out into decidui and we are going to see a double right back into quag i assume we're grass not quag coming back in makes me think rindo oh terra ice terra blast 34 percent unless he's rindo this grass not should kill he's rindo what do we do back yawn we're gonna yawn okay so thundy is gonna get yawned here dude john let me send you my pace sure thing man go ahead so we'll go ahead and look at Pay's pace here. Uh, let me see. Let me drag it on over. We have uh, Bandit Urshifu. We have Boots. Chili Reception. Oh, Chili Reception. Okay. Slush Rush. Uh, it's a Titan then with Bandit. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, Thunderous is going to be Boots. Four attacks. Three attacks Thunder Wave. Excuse me. Life Warp Greninja with Spikes. And then Gastron is going to be Earth Power, Yawn, Recover, and Stealth Rock. So both Water Grounds are going to be running Yawn in this matchup. Uh, what is the very best mod in draft is there a consensus number one or is it preference so right now depending on the terror rules usually uh the consensus number one is typically dragapult but chi and is not far behind if you will find a lot of people that will argue between those two pokemon um it's definitely between those two i don't think there's another pokemon that's even in the conversation at least not right now but uh we see uh, another spike come up which is great like spikes definitely do good into pay's team uh, I think that Spikes is probably one of the ways to open the avenue to win with the Banded Cinderace. I can only assume Banded U-Turn Cinderace. Uh, we're going to see Greninja come in here, trying to prevent that Cinderace from coming in. I don't dis I don't dislike that by any means. We're going to see Iron Bundle come in as Glow King comes in. This just choose from the uh, the Pokemon. So we're going to see Chili Reception, I assume now. Chili Reception, are we going to see a Titan come in? Greninja comes back in. Okay, uh, and I assume this has Low Kick. I did not see. It does not have Low Kick. Okay, Dashbun comes in. Oh man, now the avenue is completely opened up for Urshifu. Urshifu's in game is insane here. Insane. So, excuse me, I had something on my lip. Um, Dashbun gonna go for the protect. We see the ice beam. In comes the bundle. Does this die to a hydro? Oh my goodness! The Grin's gonna be able to pick up the Iron Bundle, and now Bleedle's really only hope of winning is still gonna be that Cinderace. Cinderace has to put in the finest to win this game at this point. Uh, Decidueye's gonna come in here. I think that dies to an Ice Beam, right? We're gonna see Leaf Blade. Doesn't even go for the Ice Beam. Down goes Greninja here, as we're going to see Urshifu come in. Pick up a KO on this Decidueye. Cinderace is gonna come in, so now we're gonna start pushing progress with this Cinderace. We're gonna for Willow. Uh, and I don't think Libero would have shown there. U-turn. Are we Libero? We're not Libero. Interesting. Okay. Dash Bun comes out. Does it die? Dash Bun does die. King Gambit, Terra flying. Kotal cleave. Gastrodon's gonna yawn here. Uh, I mean, if we were Swords Dance, how good of a spot? If he was Swords Dance there, King Gambit might have won the game. Low key. 
King Gambit would have been put in a really good spot. Was he any status move as the Titan? He was not. If he was Sword Stance there, the Titan would have been in a great spot. Uh, but no, I sure would have went before Sucker, I suppose. So, maybe not. We're going to kill the Gastron there. And we're going to go into Cinderace. Thunderbolt. We now outspeed this Pokemon. Missed Thunder Wave. Very unfortunate. Pyro Ball is going to pick up the KO on Thunderous. Uh, Slowking is going to come in. It's just going to Chili Reception, and then the game should be over, right? Sludge Bomb. Actually going to pick up the KO on the Cinderace. Uh, we just chilly reception and win the game, right? Yeah, so Titan, Ice Spinner, into Ice Spinner again, game's over. So, well played by Pei. If I was Bleedle, my only recommendation was probably to play the Cinderace a little bit more aggressive. I think once you got your spikes up, Cinderace was in such a good position to just come in and U-turn and U-turn and U-turn and force chip on things. I think it was in a great position to do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, do we have anybody that wants to throw up a game before I check out this Tony game. Anybody, anybody can recommend anybody's game right now. Uh, and that was Articuno, Pay versus Bleedle. We've only done one Zapdos game so far. Uh, oh yeah, if Flutter was allowed, Flutter would be the best Pokemon for sure, no doubt. No doubt. Um, Urshifu is also very good. I do think Pult and Pow are better in my opinion, but I think you could definitely argue Urshifu. Urshifu is like definitely up there. Um, definitely in the conversation. I just, I still think Chi and Pao and Dragapult are probably the best ones. If nobody has any games, can you do mine? For yes, I can, brother. I can. I mean, look up what division you are in. What division are you in? I actually can't find it. At, let's see. At brother? Yeah, I actually can't find what division you're in. Tony's game will be the next one, Kurt. Tony's game is the best one, so I want it to be the one before we take a, a short intermission. Why did your message get deleted? Who's deleting messages? He's an Articuno? Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Paste here. Uh, what is the... Here we go. Okay, first game of Articuno, actually. So, we'll go ahead and load this one up. So he sent us our paste, his paste as well. We have a Rough Skin, Garchomp, Stealth Rock, Rest, Earthquake, and Stone Edge. We have a Cryogonal, uh, which is Specs Cryo. Wow, that does really well here too, minus the Arcanine. Does super well. We have a Sword Stance, Grassy Seed, Sneeze into the, with the Arbelieva, which is really cool. Uh, Terra Dark. We have a, excuse me, a Taunt U-Turn, uh, Tornadus with Boots. Then we have a Fizz Dep, Unaware Skeletor, which I can only assume is here for the Salamence. And then Arbeliva, obviously here for the Spectrier. So, uh, if you could give a Paradox form to one Pokemon, what would it be and why? Um, it would probably be... I would give a past form to Hydreigon. I don't like Iron Jugulus, and I think they did him kind of dirty with that. And it's one of my favorite Pokemon. I would love to see what it looks like as a past Pokemon. I think it'd be so cool. You can do me your pace as well? Yeah. Sorry for lurking? Never be sorry for lurking. There's no problem with that by any means. No problem with that. If you guys do not want to talk, you don't have to. So, Lemonade's going to send their team. Surely your specs Water Pulse Cryogonal? No. I actually don't know if it gets Water Pulse this generation. It, is it a TM this gen? Let's see. Cryo. Yeah, actually it does, but no, they're not Water Pulse. That would have been a good shout, actually. That would have been crazy. Uh, let's see, and we got the other pace. So the other pace on Lemonade's side is going to be Spell Tax Spectrier. We're gonna have Arcanine Hisui with Agility. Ooh, Agility, Edge, and Raging Fury, which I believe is like Fire-type Outrage. Uh, an Iron Defense, Healing Wish, Earth Power, and Moonblast, Enamorous Theory, and a Roost Stone Edge. I didn't even know Salamence got Stone Edge. Uh, Air Slash and Draco Scalamence, and then we have 
Hibo, Stealth Rock, Whirlwind, Slack Off, and Earthquake. And then we have Quiver, Sui, Toxic, Taunt, Spikes, and Barbarage. So just looking at this matchup, let's see. Yeah, Mr. Mag, we did watch your game. It was one of the first ones we watched, actually. <clears throat> so looking at this matchup, Garchomp obviously does really, really well into it. Uh, I feel like we have some good prep into the Garchomp, though. I think Hisuian Arcanine is going to be the win con, obviously, here. Uh, Hisuian Arcanine does look really, really good if it gets this agility off. Actually, looks fantastic. There's very little that can be done if this agility gets off once this Garchomp gets chipped, of course. Uh, which is possible through the rest of the team. Things like Hippo could chip it down, uh, just getting hazards up. So I, I like the Wincon on this side of the, the field. And the Wincon over here is going to be that grassy terrain sneeze there, which I don't think this man can see coming. So that's going to be what we're aiming for here, guys. We're going to go ahead and see how this game starts. We're going to see a Torrenty and a Hippo as the Torrenty is going to go ahead and taunt, prevent rocks, which is fantastic uh, for the Cryogonal. I like the game plan of getting those that taunt up immediately. And... Uh, we're going to see the Enamors come in as we see the U-turn come off. In comes the Cryo. Cryo is going to be in a great position here. If we were Water Pulse here, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Imagine. Imagine the Water Pulse. But we're going to Ice Beam. Still do 22%. That's a pretty good chip. No way. And the Wind Con is frozen. Just like that. The Wind Con is frozen. That's horrible. Garchomp's going to come in for free. Uh, try to thaw. Unfortunately, does not. Hippo come back in. As we're going to, I assume, exchange rocks here. As Cryo is going to come back in. Obviously, it kind of has to aggressively come in here. Uh, you Ice Beam on a potential Arcanine switch in. Down goes the Hippo. Dang, that Arcanine Freeze was so game-defining, unfortunately. We're going to see Garchomp come in on the Arcanine. And Enamorous is going to come in here. Arbeliva on the enamorous oof, oof, that did some damage enamorous is actually not that bad people hate on this pokemon i think it's not that bad i don't know a whole lot about it but from what i see it's not that bad leech seed very good i believe it's that leech seed does very very well into this matchup uh the dog had raging fury not flare blitz no uh i don't and i don't know if raging fury thaws and i even if it does you're locked in so we switch out, we go into Torn here on the Draco. We chew that up, absolutely chewed. And I assume we you turn out here? Yeah, we U-turn out into Skeldurge, Garchomp. We go Garchomp here as a Stone Edge comes out. Good play, good play for sure. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and see the switch into Arbeliva once more. Uh, as we're gonna see the Enamorous come out this time and Arbeliva just gets a Leech Seed off, right? Healing Wish comes out. It has to be an Arcanine, right? It's now or never, you go for the game now yeah okay so we're actually in not the worst position to win this game like we can win the only thing is i think raging if raging fury is the one that locks you in i don't know if you can win just because sneezler comes in right and even then guard chomp's not low enough so you unfortunately you probably have to switch out here right or willow oh you hard willow on the guard that makes your job a little bit easier uh, and then you have that in the back. I like the Airheart nickname, by the way, the A-Dry reference. Salamence is going to come out, take absolutely nothing from that guard job. Uh, in the in comes the Tornadus. Going to take some massive damage from that Stone Edge. We're going to see the U-turn come off here. Arbeliva going to get a Leech Seed off, probably. He's Air Slash, right? We're Air Slash Salamence? I think we are. I believe we are Air Slash Salamence. We are. Yes, that's going to do massive damage. And we flinched. That is unfortunate. A leech seed there would have been massive. We would have been at 42%. Uh, but Garchomp's going to come in. Air Slash again. This Garchomp's going to die to two. You just, you died to one more, man. Oh, Rest! I didn't even, I forgot about Rest. Rest Garchomp's really cool. Were we Sleep Talk? Last move Sleep Talk? No, we're last move Earthquake, I think. Uh, Tornado's going to very begrudgingly switch in on the Salamence Draco Meteor. As Bleak Wind Storm does unfortunately miss. I'm not sure how much that would have done off the top of my head. Skeletridge comes in on the Arcanine. Arcanine is going for it, man. I mean, you might as well, right? Oh, and Morterra Water. Okay. I didn't even realize that. Uh, we're going to do some massive damage to the Skeletridge. I don't think the crit matter. I think it 2 it KO'd regardless. Uh, as we're going to be able to pick up the KO on this Pokemon. What comes in now? Garchomp? Now that you're asleep. Oh, really? I was going to say he slept zero turns. I might have just went for the Raging Fury. Let's see. Or the Stone Edge, even. Arcanine Hisui. Unless I'm just completely wrong with my calcs. My head calcs. Uh, Stone Edge. Oh, never mind. You did no damage. Raging Fury. 
Never, uh, never mind, I guess. Never mind. Uh, let me catch up on chat too. Uh, I hope you're still on in one hour. I, there's no doubt I will be. This is we're just about to be halfway through this, these games. We're gonna have to go a little quicker. Raging is fire outrage. Yep. Okay. I believe it is a cool Pokemon. I wish it got more. Uh, I wish it got a little bit more love. So we're gonna go ahead and see the tornado switch in now as the Salamence comes in. Dracos down goes Tornadus. And now Cryogonal picks up a KO, or it gets big damage on the Arcanine, right? I assume this two-hit KOs. I can only assume. Oh, even Freeze Dry two-hit KOs. Okay, down goes this Pokemon. I assume maybe you go Spectria. Yeah, you go Spectria. You try to get the boost here. Oh, you just plot. You just plot. That's gonna do a lot of damage though. Oh no! Dang, I don't know if that mattered because of the uh, Grassy Seed. Sneasler, but that is definitely unfortunate because we're Terra Dark Sneasler. Uh, we go our Believer. We're going to try to get our... Yeah, we died just to get the Seed Sower. Sneasler is going to come in. I think Sneasler might clean up the game. What's our fourth move? Terra Blast, Dire Claw, Close Combat, Swords Dance. Yeah, I think we clean up the game with Sneasler. Intimidate. Oh, I forgot about Intimidate. Terra Blast. I mean, we Terra Blast again, right? Dire Claw. I mean, that also works. Dire Claw. Down goes the Arcanine. Uh, Salamence is going to come in. I mean, do we do we stay in a Sword Stance? We do. We stay in a Sword Stance. How much does Draco do? A ton of damage, but now you, you're going to do a ton of return. Do, you, do we lose this, though? Dire Claw. Not quite going to be enough. As Draco again! And down goes the Sneasler. And unfortunately, I think our hero has fallen. And I think the uh, Frozen Arcanine is going to prevail. A missed Draco. Oh, no. 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 Okay. Okay. So, there's a lot of hacks back and forth between that battle. Ultimately, I don't know how much of it mattered, but Lemonade is going to prevail with the Frozen Arcanine on turn like two. So, fantastic. Uh, I always ran Air Slash over Hurricane or even sometimes both on Torrenty Engine 8. I agree. I did the exact same thing. Um, I was afraid of Sleep Talk and I didn't want rough skin damage. That's fair. No, that's completely fair. He was sneezed to meet you. Will Dire Claw be banned in OU? I have no idea. I do not play a lot of uh, a lot of OU here. So I, I'm very curious as to what that Shadow Ball roll was. We can actually check if you guys want to. And I, I do kind of want to. We're going to import the uh, the Garchomp set. We're going to import the Spectrier set here. Garchomp, Spectrier, Shadow Ball. Uh, we were spell tagged. That was a guaranteed kill. It looks by the looks of it. Let's see. Were we at 54 or were we at 60? Are we are we lefties? No, that was a guaranteed kill by the looks of it. I don't know if you guys can see that on screen. It says uh, 54 to 63% right here. So that was a guaranteed kill. Uh, the last mod interaction was super close. Yeah, with no spell tag, he always lived. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So. Yep, yep, yep. Good game to you guys. That was a really that was one of the best games I think so far. And then of course, the last one before we take a short 10 minute break, we're gonna see Tony versus Quaxwell. I, I think is essentially the the name of this one. We're gonna put this one on fast because everybody's seen this one. I just kind of want to go over it a little bit. Tony versus Quaxwell. We're gonna go ahead and hop in here. We're gonna see Sandy Shocks and Killer Watcher. Uh, Lando is gonna come in. So one thing to keep in mind too is Tony revealed U-turn turn one. Keep that in mind because it's gonna be important later. We're gonna see Stealth Rocks go up immediately uh, as the Demon Quaxwell switches in on the Lando T. So. Uh, Screamtail is going to come out and Quaxwell is going to switch into Iron Moth and a big Thunder Wave on the Screamtail's part. This Iron Moth being paralyzed is fantastic, right? Like, obviously, Iron Moth posed such a big threat to this team. Uh, Heatran can mitigate that, but I think this was the Terra Iron Moth, if I remember correctly. So, we're going to see Heatran come in here, which is obviously the check to the Iron Moth. Uh, and then Quaxwell comes in and is just going to wall the Heatran as we're going to see probably a rapid spin a rapid spin come off and do 18 percent to the kilowattro as we see sandy shocks come in and again we saw earlier that tony has u-turn right we saw earlier that tony has u-turn so tony should have went for a u-turn here but he goes for a volt switch i'm not really sure why because sandy shocks always comes in on kilowattro lando's going to come in on the sandy shocks as we're going to see a double into quacks well good double from flapple's part as we're going to see screamtail come back in and a liquidation do a massive 15 percent 
Iomas gonna come in on the Screamtail. Screamtail wants to get the wish off a massive toxic spike from Flapoy here. As obviously T spikes do fantastic. If he's not boost GM power, that sucks for Tony. Otherwise, it's kind of just for Lycanroc. Excuse me for one second. <clears throat> <clears throat> So we're going to go ahead and see Heatran come in here as we see the U-turn from Iron Moth. Big U-turn as Quacks will. Big Quacks is going to come back in, throw off a roost. And at this point, Tony knows that he does not really beat the GOAT Quacks We're going to see Liquidation pop off here, uh, get a defense drop on the Screamtail. Another massive 15%. Iron Moth is going to come back in and we're going to see the uh, Screamtail get back up to basically full, but it is now it is not poison. So... Uh, we're going to see, hopefully, a U-turn. We're going to see a U-turn come out from the Iron Moth. No paras. We never wish luck, bad luck upon anybody. As Lando U-turns on the Vaporeon, and in comes the Screamtail, taking 23% from Vapo. So at this point, it's probably in his best interest to Surf again, because Surf plus Poison can actually kill him, potentially. And that's what he does. Does it die? It does die. So Screamtail goes down. You probably pass it, and the Kilo makes sense. And again, we're going to see a Volt switch from the Kilo. I'm not entirely sure why. I still think we just always U-turned. Um... Or if you wanted the wish that badly, maybe just attacked. I, I don't know. Maybe this this one makes a little bit more sense than the last one, but it is what it is. Um, we're gonna go ahead and see Kilo get back up to full though. Kilo's gonna switch out here, go into the Lando. Lando is getting very chipped and whittled down as it actually can't even take another power gym. So we're gonna see Terra flying Lando. Good call from Tony. He had to do something. When you're down this much and you're getting beat down by a fucking Quaxwell, you gotta make a read in some sort of play to get back in the game. So we're gonna see the Terra flying Terra Blast come off here. Sandy Shocks is gonna come in. Uh, Heatran's gonna come in here too. Power gym, gonna do a lot of damage to Heatran, but not quite kill, but Earth power is gonna go down. Uh, Lando comes in. He's got one hit left. What's he gonna go for? It doesn't matter because he can't break through Quaxwell because there's no setup on this Lando. We're gonna see a couple of roost turns here as Quaxwell gets back up to full. He's gonna be able to kill the Lando and live on 2% from the Stone Edge from the Lycanroc and be able to take out the Lycanroc Dusk. And at this point, the game's over. We are boots on the Chiampao. Chiampao is gonna be able to kill the Quaxwell and he is gonna do massive damage to the Vapo. Unfortunately, not able to live too, so even if we were Sword Stance, it didn't matter, we lost the game. Uh, goes hard Kilo to try to force some progress. I guess he could U-turn. He This time he U-turns on the potential Sandy Shocks, but Flappo was willing to sack his Vaporeon there. And unfortunately, Tony's gonna lose to Quaxwell there. That was a good game. Everybody really liked his, that game this week. And that is, we are now halfway through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, this was uh, Zapdos, Tony versus Flapple. And the last game that we watched was Brother versus. Okay, so that is that's gonna be 12 games done. We have streamed for basically two hours because it was about 15 minutes before we really got started. So I'm gonna take a little break. I'm gonna take a quick 10 minute break. Everybody just go get some food, get a snack or something, and we'll be back to watch the last 12 games here. I, I don't know if you guys can hear, but my voice is shot. So thank you guys again for all the support so far. I really appreciate it. We're gonna try to speed it up, probably make the second half of the stream under an hour is what I'm gonna aim for. Um, but yeah, I'll be back in five, 10 minutes, guys. Uh, there we go. And good night, SJ.
I was still muted. You're right. Thank you. I tried to click it. We're going to go ahead and try to get these games done. We're going to try to get these games done. Uh, we're talking about me versus Boat. My team was Wincon Iron Valiant. I had Lenard Jr. I had Diglett. Thank you, by the way, Lemonade, for telling me that. The whole point was to trap Toxicity with Diglett, try to kill that Pokemon. And we're going to go pretty fast on this one because it's my game. We don't really have to talk about it too much. We're going to U-turn on the lead run mode. We're going to go into Garchomp as we catch the Volt Switch. Garchomp was just here to get spikes up. Uh, be kind of a hazard, but we're going to see the Dodge Bun come in. We U-turn on the Dodge Bun into the Tinkaton pretty freely. And it can't really do a whole lot to us. Excuse me, as the wish does get passed to itself, obviously. Iron Treads is going to come in as I think I make a double trying to predict something. Uh, I think I predicted the Iron Treads. The whole thing was I did not want rocks up because we were Sash Diglett. So I was playing super hyper aggressive trying to prevent those rocks. Uh, we see the Rapid Spin come off. It turns out he wasn't even rocks, by the way. He was AV. We're going to U-turn as we take a lot of damage on a Torm. We go Slowbro, and he's a hard time breaking Slowbro on his team. Rotom is going to come in and take 38% from the Psychic Volts. Willow is going to come off. Do uh, It is going to miss. It's not really going to matter because they landed the following turn. We're going to spike up. And then Dosh Bun does come in as we get another spike up, I think. Oh, no. We actually go Tinkaton. Uh, we go Tinkaton there. Slow bro, we double into trying to catch maybe uh, like an Iron Treasure or something. I think we surf here to prevent the Iron Treasure from coming in. No, we Psychic. Dang. I don't know why I did that. Prevent the Rotom, I guess. Um, But... We are going to go ahead and stay in. Obviously, we're going to just surf. And now he's in range almost of another surf. Uh, we see the trick come off. We are now Choice Scarf. That's fine. I'm going to get another spike up. I have no reason not to. Uh, we force the Iron Treads in. We just go into our Slow Bro, which should wall this until the end of time. Uh, he's going to Volt Switch here. Slow Bro is going to pretty much just wall everything. We're going to throw off a Body Press here. We are Colbert Body Press to catch the Urshifu off guard as the Rotom is going to take a lot of damage. Now it's in range of a surf from the... Uh, from the slow bro i go guard chomp and i pivot hard into torn expecting the leaf storm and now they're minus two a u-turn either kills them and gives me momentum uh or it gives me momentum otherwise so we go guard chomp now trying to force out the urshifu uh or the talon flame to potentially outspeed me but i, I was scarf so it, it was either the urshifu or the dash one right we go for the rock tomb we are just going to rock tomb until the end of time because uh, Iron Valiant always revenges this. It doesn't matter. I don't need guard chomp anymore. Spikes were nice, but everything's pretty much uh, pretty. Every, there's not that much damage around, but we don't really need spikes at this point. We go Tinkaton now. This Tinkaton threatens a KO on the Urshifu. We're going to play rough into the Iron Treads. We go slow on this Pokemon. Earthquake comes out into the Volt Switch. We're going to do tons of damage to the Toxtricity with a Surf. We go Tinkaton and they make a nice double into the Talon Flame. To no avail though, because Slowbro pretty much walls the remainder of this team other than Toxtricity. In comes the Urshifu. I always lived a wicked blow knowing they're set, so we just stayed in and body press. Down goes the Urshifu. Talon Flame's going to go ahead and and U turn, and I believe I surf. I surf and do a lot of damage to the dash bun. I just thunder wave. Now, this dash bun is paralyzed, it's gonna have a lot harder of a time throwing up wishes as it does get paralyzed there as we throw off a surf. We're gonna go torn here. Wish comes off again. Toxtricity comes in, and I U turn, baby. And you already know what time it is. It's Lenard Jr. time. They are gonna reveal to be scarf, which is fine by me because I've kept my sash intact, and Lenard Jr picks up a KO and then goes down to the town flame and at this point in the game slow bro absolutely walls literally everything we're gonna miss a bleak win it doesn't matter uh, at the end of the day slow bro just beat everything and there was nothing you could do but I was thoroughly impressed with how Bolt played I think he played a good game I was shocked there was no Skeledurge I'm not sure what he would have brought it over I guess he really valued defog is why town flame was here I can only assume defog was the last move but I really was surprised there was no Skeledurge yeah, Torn is very hard to break. I was also a bulkier Torn, but so that, that was going to be our game. Uh, and the next game, we're not, we're not doing Goose yet. There was another game that people were asking for. Mountain Man, I believe. Which one is it? Here we go. People were asking for this one, so we're going to go ahead and do this one. Leo versus Mountain Man. We see how Lucha. Uh, these were two lower rated teams if i remember correctly we see a halucha glaceon iron leaves corviknight umbreon and haxorus versus the electrode hisui fortress galarian articuno hisui and gudra enamorous and great tusk so just looking at this matchup on the surface enamorous goes crazy uh if we can get the corviknight chip in any fashion but corviknight also walls the literal entire team there actually is not a pokemon on the opposing side that enjoys facing corviknight unless we're terra fire enamorous so, I'm not sure how we break Corviknight, actually. I'm not sure how this team beats Corviknight. 
uh, Electro. Yeah, but that's about it. So we see Earthquake turn one, do tons of damage because he's a uh, life orb. Grass Knot? Dude. I didn't know how I was got Grass Knot. That's really cool. That's super cool. Down goes the Great Tusk turn two. I wouldn't have scouted for that either. I actually didn't know that. Uh, Corviknight comes in on the Enamorous. Moonblast does a massive chunk of damage. Uh, but Mystical Fire. Ooh. That is enough to knock it out, actually. Wow, I didn't expect that. So down goes the Corviknight. So there goes the biggest problem to the team. Uh, Terra Fairy Enamorous comes out. Endure. I assume we're going to see like some sort of Salak or Lychee Berry. Probably Lychee Berry. Uh, weakness policy, actually. Okay. And we see the Acro. Does this win? No, we're Aftermath. Okay, down goes that. We see Enamorous come back in. There are no Enamorous switch-ins now. Uh, Quirk Drive attack. Terra Fairy. Moonblast is 82%. Enamorous is probably going to die. Ooh, agility. This, this doesn't break through Fortress, though. Terra Blast, that does a lot. This now dies to close combat. I can only assume. Uh, well, he's not close combat. He's Sacred Sword, so it doesn't matter. Oh, he goes for a sub. Why do we go for a sub there? I am not sure. We are going to see the Terra Blast take out Long John Silver. Uh, as Articuno actually is the one to come in here. Chew a hit. Absolutely chew a hit. Air Slash. Able to kill that Pokemon. Glaceon. Are all these mountain nicknames? That's funny. Uh, Air Slash does, does half to this Glaceon. As we see a Trailblaze come out. Freeze Dry is going to pick up the KO on Articuno. I'm thinking Mountain wins this with Fortress. No? Uh, red card into the Umbreon, we Volt Switch, Enamorous gets a KO. Taunt. I think Moonblast killed, yeah? What? What's happening? Why are we not Moonblasting? Why are we giving up HP on the fort? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Counter. Why? Why did we not just Moonblast? No way that there's a Terra Fairy Life or a Moonblast, right? And you have enough HP. I think you win. What do. We... Yeah, down goes that. Down goes that. Down goes that. I'm very confused why we went. We sacked our Fortress and lost the differential point, but it is what it is. Enamorous had a really good matchup. Um, and Leo. Uh, Leo's team could not do anything against Enamorous. It is what it is, man. Mountain versus Pirates. Oh, is that the nickname theme? Okay, good shout. I didn't even realize that. Good shout. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and go. We're gonna save Lanad's game for last because this was a heartbreaker. Uh, if we have any game recommendations, by the way, go ahead and throw them up. I'm just gonna pick randomly until then. We're gonna click on this one. Uh, it looks like it's Spider versus. Spider versus, let me see, let me pull up the Moltres replay, so I think this is Moltres. Spider versus Wombo, okay. Fourth of a Chub is Wombo. <laughs> Fourth of a Chub is Wombo. So we see Cleavor, Sneasler, Hisui, and Typhoon. We see four Hisui and Pokemon against Chi, Yu, Enamorous, Ting, Lu, Dragonite. <sighs> I mean, I, I assume Gudra is probably a V and can take hits decently from the Chi Yu, but Chi Yu otherwise looks fantastic here. Uh, if we can get some hazards up. If we can get some hazards up, it looks like we're in a really good spot here. I, I think Spider, I probably would do Spider matchup, but uh, Cleavor getting rocks up is gonna be super annoying for this team to try to deal with. I assume we have to be boots on Dragonite and you almost wanna be boots on Chi Yu. I don't know if you are. Um, Sneezer also does really, really well in this matchup. Let's see how it plays out. Let's just see how it plays out. Cleavor is led as we see the Dragonite. We're just going for Swords Dance turn one. An Outrage turn one. Sash, Stone Axe, kills the Dragonite. I did... What? Through multi-scale? No. No. Yeah, I guess so. I fucking guess so. All right. I, I guess so. So, um, I assume this is... I mean, lead Cleavor picked up a KO. You can't be too mad at your lead Pokemon doing that. We're going to switch out. We're going to save it. Gujar Hisui is going to look like it is going to be the answer to that Pokemon there. Um, we're going to see Ting Lu come in on the Hisui and Gujar. Thunderbolt trying to call the Enamorous, I assume. 
Uh, as we see the Cleavor sack to the Ting Lu as they get a spike up, we're just gonna go ahead and get uh, click a button on this Pokemon. Wow, x Scissor comes out. That does massive damage to the Enamorous. That's some pretty good damage, and we know they're not boots, so they're probably either Scarf or Specs, you would assume, because we didn't see Life Orb. Uh, Killo comes in. I assume U-Turn comes out. U-Turn does come out. We're going to go Sneasler and try to claim a KO, right? We're going to go Sneasler and try to claim a KO. Are we Terra fighting? Or are we just U-Turning again? Oh, we're just U-Turning again. We're in the Vortex. Okay. We go into Gudra. Gudra Sap Zipper should wall this Among Us pretty easily. Ting Lu is going to come in. Uh, the only bad thing about this Gudra being forced in is that it's getting closer and closer to in range of being 2-hit KO on switching from Chi Yu. In fact, it might already be at that point uh, with the Fire Blast. We see Killo come in on the Ting Lu. We're going to see Hurricane unfortunately missed to the left. Rock Tomb's going to come out on the Killo. Not quite a two-hit KO. Ooh, but we got the competitive boost. And that's going to do some massive damage to something. Oh, no. I don't think Chi Yu is the switch in here. I think Chi Yu was too important to the end game. Oh, and the crit. I don't know if that mattered. Probably did. It has good spadaf. Um, You save Killo for sure. You, you always save Killo. You assume it, it, it's just a scarf. It's scarf. Oh, no. We don't save the Killo. No, I think we should have probably saved the Killo there. Ah, man, I really don't know if I agree with the Chi Yu sack. Ah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. I might have, I might have honestly sacked Ting Lu before I sacked Chi Yu, but I digress. We see Typhlosion come in on this Choice Scarf Enamorous. Uh, Moonblast going to come out, not going to be a 2 hit KO after the spike. Then there is going to pick up the KO there. In comes Ting Lu, has to. In comes the Ting Lu. Uh, and then just a free Earthquake, it looks like. So Gudra obviously no longer needed because no more Chi Yu. Down goes the Gudra. Don Fan's going to come in. We're going to see a Moongus, the Pivot. I'm honestly not sure who wins this game at this point. I think Sneasler wins, it, but it depends on what this Lucario set is. And if they're Terra, I actually don't know if they are. Uh, we're gonna see Rapid Spin as the Spore comes out on the Don fan. I assume, are we switching to, I, I assume we're not switching, I guess, because we were faster. Ting Lu is gonna come in, potentially try to get another Hazard up. Just go for Earthquake, okay. Just go for Earthquake. Uh, Among is gonna come back in. We're gonna see some big damage here as he's gonna put back to sleep. Uh, this looks like we're gonna be here a while. Uh, Don fans eventually able to push through the Among Us as we're going to go for game with Lucario. Terra normal. Earthquake. Ice Shard comes out. And Lucario is able to pick up a kill. Why did we Earthquake? Did E Speed not do more damage because you're Terra? No way, right? Terra normal. Uh, this is Life Orb, but same, same shit, right? Yeah, E Speed did 5% uh, more damage. Oop. Um, we're gonna see. The, I, I think the game's over now, though, right? Like, Lucario is walled by this Typhlosion. So, I think the game's over. We're gonna see the double. Okay. Okay. Good double. Good double. Did the game come down to that double? Let me see. So, if he flamethrowered after Rock's damage. Actually, yeah, the game might have come down to that double. That might have been like a really good 50 50 there, where it was really safe on his part to switch out because. Uh, what did this do to you? I don't know if so if spider earthquake there. I think he won the game But obviously that's not what happened. Wombo was gonna get the double right Why not sack Lucario so that is a good question if he would have sacked Lucario I think he actually he would have in this situation. He would have won. Uh, we're gonna see Terra flying come out Wait We're Terra flying so that means That means I don't know if I agree with the... I don't know. Yeah, whatever. It worked out. Close combat. Down goes Ting Lu, probably. Poisoned. Rock to him. Minus speed. Doesn't matter. And that's going to be game because I assume... Yeah. Typhlos is going to clean it up. So, uh, Wombo's going to be able to pick that one up. I, I think that came down to uh, somewhat of a 50... I don't know if it was a, a true 50-50, but it was a little bit of a 50-50 and a nice double there at the end by Wombo. Oh, why not? Uh, no, at the Chi Yu moment. That's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah, if Lucario is if Lucario earthquake, then yeah, for sure. So that I, I still disagree with the sacking of Chi Yu. I think that game would have been a lot different if Chi Yu didn't go down here. I think maybe 
I mean, yeah, Lucario would have been a fine sack too. I still, th I still just think like even just Team Luo would have been good at that point, to be honest. But maybe you were that scared of Typhlosion. But then Chi Yu does beat Typhlosion and offensively pressure stuff. I, I, I don't know. I think I wouldn't have sacked Chi Yu. That, that's my, my thing with that game. So, next game that we're gonna do here, we're gonna do. I saw Zach. We're gonna do Zach. He's a mod here. Uh, we're gonna see him facing up against Mania Pokemon. I'm not sure who this is off the top of my head. Let's see. Oh, it's Armenia. Armenia versus my boy Zach. Two hour streams going crazy. I know, and I still got shit to do. <laughs> but it's okay. I've had a lot of fun. We're going to see Gengar, Chestnut, Cresselia, Lenard, Azumarill, and Lycanroc versus Palafin, Azurud, Thundee T, Salazzle, Ursa Luna, and Gudra. So we're going to go ahead and hop in here. It looks like, let's see, Palafin does really well, but the Chestnut check, I don't know. Uh, looks like it might be a lot of momentum into Terra Thundee is what the, the game plan is here. Uh, Ursa Luna does a really good job of walling Gengar. And then Azu does really well once the root is chipped. So we'll, we'll see. I assume Azu's probably the win con, yeah? Uh, for, for Armenia here. We're going to see Palafin lead, Chestnut lead, switch out Palafin into Gudra. Azu comes in on the Gudra every single time. Uh, play rough. That has to knock it out. Good night. That has to knock out Gudra. Gudra's gone. In comes Thundee on the Crest. And we're going to see a Terra flying U turn on the Cresselia. Uh, so that tells me that he's not Wincon Thundee then, so I'm curious to see what his uh, his Wincon is here. Maybe just getting things in range of Palafin, which is also a viable Wincon here. And now, Armenia is stuck in the Vortex. We're going to see a U-turn from the Zerud. In comes the Thundee. Crest going to come back in. We're going to Terra Blast and do a massive 34%. As we're going to assume that they're actually, they might be a uh, choice, seeing as how they did not U-turn there. How do I decide which games to watch? So if you guys do not recommend a game, I just randomly pick one. But if you guys recommend a game, I'll pick what I'll watch whatever game that you pick. So oh, we're gonna see Palafin come in. I assume we're gonna see a morning sun here or moonlight, same thing. Uh, as Palafin's probably going to ooh, wave crash. Did not have any respect for the Rocky Helmet Chestnut in the back at all. And we're gonna see a reflect come out. And Thundee's gonna come back in. Was that banded? Maybe. We're gonna see dual screen, Cresselia. Thundee comes back in, in comes the Lando. Terra Blast still does a hefty chunk through the light screen. Uh, as we see the double into Cress and the Terra Blast again, uh, which actually doesn't kill the Cress. So Cress is now dead. And in comes Lycanroc. Lycanroc pressures this Pokemon immensely. Earth Luna. Brick Break does some significant damage. And we're burned. We now pick up a KO. We now choose which one we're. we're picking up and we choose lando but lando switches in on the earthquake so we actually don't choose one i lied uh if we facaded there i think we claimed one but also maybe worried about the Lycanroc staying in or maybe the gengar coming in i don't think he would ever switch gengar there though uh we see the lando turn into a water type in front of the zarud uh, oh wait, no, it was a switch in. It was a switch in. Okay, we see the Terra Blast as the Zerud switches in. Power Whip is gonna be able to take out, is gonna be able to take out the Lando, even through the Rindo Berry. Uh, Gengar is gonna come in and kill the Zerud, and now Ursa Luna just comes in and picks a KO, right? No? Oh, we're Scarf. We're Scarf Thundee. So Thundee picks up a KO. Thundee might clean the game. Now Lycanroc comes in. Uh, we go Ursa Luna now because we don't need it because Gengar is dead. That makes sense. Uh, now Ursula Luna is going to go down, Palafin comes out, Jet Punch, we're going to take Rocky plus Spike. We have one more switch in with this Palafin, a single switch in. We have to go into Salazzo here. We don't have another choice. We go Salazzo and click Poison Move. Yeah, we go Salazzo, click Poison Move. Sub? Earthquake! Oh man. Wait, 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 wait. So, I do want to say, I want to say, right here, oh, hold on. Right here, I feel personally... Like, maybe you should have Earthquake because, or made a double, because I do think that he probably should have went Thundee, actually, looking at it a little bit more, but he was never staying in with Palafin. You, your Giga Drain was never doing anything to these two Pokemon, and uh, if you Giga Drained, you were in a bad spot, whereas if you Earthquake, you either killed the Salazzle or you were in a bad spot against the Thundee. So I guess you also could have just pulled a double there. 
into the Lycanroc, because Lycanroc would have also put you in a fantastic spot. I think that's my uh, my save for this game. So we're going to see Giga Drain come out, do no damage to the Salazzo. Uh, we're back to where Earthquake breaks sub. We're going to see multiple subs come off. Eventually, Salazzo kills the Chestnut. Lycanroc's going to come in. Does Lycanroc clean up? Actually, so letting not letting this get a sub up obviously makes sense, right? But now that this is dead, you lose to Palafin. So maybe if we had Jet on Azu, we should have switched out, went into this guy a Cellar Rock, right? Should have went into one of these Pokemon, Jetted or a Cellar Rock to break the sub, and then went to the other one the following turn. I think that sequence actually could have potentially won the game. Maybe just because you still had this to check the Palafin, but now you lose to Palafin. Uh, pretty handedly, I think. Thunderbolt. Wait, where was the Acela Rock? Wait, why do we not Acela Rock? We knew there was Scarf from earlier on the Gengar, right? I'm a little confused as to why we didn't uh, Acela Rock there. Um, did that kill? Thunderesterian. Life Orb. I mean, it didn't kill, but it did do significant damage. Put it in range of an Aqua Jet from the Azu, and then didn't Azu win the game? Yeah, if you had Jet Azu, you won the game then. I'm a little curious as to why we didn't Acela Rock there. Yeah, I actually have no idea. You won the game if you Acela Rocked. Unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, I thought we confirmed that that was a Scarf Thundee way earlier. Yeah, right here. Right here, we confirmed that was a Scarf Thundee, so... I'm not sure if you saw rocked you on the game, unfortunately. Panic through told you I was stupid. That's fine. That is fine. I was just I was convincing myself that uh that was the sequence of blades that happened there. Yeah. Uh, I mean hey, it happens. You learn from it, man. It definitely had some my fair share of nervous games too. So we're gonna move on here. Uh someone requested, I think it's actually Dan requested it, right? I'd be interested in the reaction to my game if possible. Just curious to see if my plays make sense as it is my first draft league. Okay, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, we'll take a look at yours right now. It's actually the next one I clicked on, so I was going to do it anyway. Uh, we see Roaring Moon, River Room, Lando T, uh, the Dunspar, Sloking, and Iron Hands versus Spatra, Hoopa U, Lilligant, Sui, Mudsdale, Zapdos, and Reggie Alecki. So, judging off team preview, this could be a good game to get a Spatra in a position to win. You just need to chip Roaring Moon, and you need to chip the Dunsparce, uh, or be Lum. And I feel like you do both pretty well. You chip both of those Pokemon pretty well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, th I think we're gonna go ahead and just jump in. I think a Spather should probably be the win. Come, we'll go ahead and switch sides to you. And yeah, no, that's okay, Armenia. Like it happens, man. It really does happen. But I uh, will jump in here. I, I expect maybe a Muzzdale lead trying to get rocks up to guarantee chip on these Pokemon because there's no remover. I think that would probably be the uh, the course of events here. We're actually going to see Reggie Alecki lead. Uh, I'm going to assume a Bolt Switch come out. Or we're going to see a Reflect come out as the Roaring Moon Union turns. Okay. Uh, Lando comes out here. I don't know if we can tell if that's banded damage or not through the Reflect. Uh, Lando comes out here. Espathra is going to go ahead and come in. Oh, a spot hard Espathra. Hard Espathra. Crazy, because I feel like I obviously don't know your set, but I feel like a spot through it. There's so good in the late game here. You probably don't want to get rid of it this early. And Lando was a very strong Pokemon. You're about to take a lot of damage. You could have went to Zapdos for absolutely free right here. Uh, Lando has a hard time really touching Zapdos. So we see a Calm Mind come off here, and we're gonna see the Taunt. Or if we're Lumina Crash, you're in a good spot. We're Terra Psychic, Stored Power, 60%. That's some big damage. Um, but now you're massively chipped as the Slow King does come into wall. You, I, I didn't even see the Slow King. Slow King also is really well into you. Uh, 28% as the Thunder Wave comes off. Are we Lum? We're not Lum. So, uh, unfortunately, we're now in a pretty tough spot with this Spather. I'm not sure what the win con is now. Hisui and the Ligand might be Victory Dance. Maybe is the only thing I could think of. Uh, as Slow King fails to pick up the KO on a Spather, so you actually might force a KO here. You force a KO. Cool. Never mind, that para sucks. <laughs> that para sucks. Interesting fact. Let me see what this, let me read this interesting fact. Both Mr. Beast and Woe Vicky posted competitive Pokemon content in Gen 4 and 5. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, Roman was gonna come in, obviously it is the Pokemon to revenge you. 
uh, Terra Dark. We see D Gleam come out, do massive damage still. Holy shit. Holy shit, we do massive damage still. Actually, dude, that's crazy. That means he was no split after wearing Moon. I feel like if you were ever able to get another Calm Mind off, that might have been the game. Yeah, if you were Roost, what was the last move, Dan? If you were if you were last move Roost, you might have been able to boost past this uh, this slow king here. You could have uh, Roosted here and then Calm Minded. You would have been playing para games, but it looks like you would have won the game if that was the case, if you were last move Roost. So uh, we'll see, let's see. We're right here. Roy Moon is going to pick up the KO on the Aspathra there. As the Regilecki comes in and in comes the Iron Hands on the Rapid Spin. So valuing and getting away hazards, I definitely can get behind that. It looks like now Hussuni and Lilligant has to be the win con. We're going to vault into Mudsdale. Mudsdale is a pretty good check to this. It was Protect. Okay, that makes sense to them. That makes sense to them. Uh... Mudsdale is going to go ahead and roar out the Iron Hands. Scary Pokemon into Roaring Moon, who is going to U-turn here. Still not sure if we can tell if that's Scarf or Band from uh, what we've seen so far, but we're going to get our rocks up, and I definitely like that. I definitely value our rocks in this matchup. Zapdos is going to come in. Big Zappy. And Big Zappy could Volt, could U-turn, could Thunder Wave. That's also a good play. As the Thunder Wave comes off on the, the Dunsparce, we're going to discharge you some massive damage. Glare, Zapdos is going to be immune to that. Glare does not affect electric types. We're going to discharge again as I as Headbutt comes out. I expect a Roost to probably come out from the uh, from both sides now. Probably, yeah. If Roost comes out from both sides, you could discharge. I mean, you just play for the para, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you just you can. You have the, the privilege. Uh, we're able to discharge again. Uh, if he gets paired here, oh, hard Lilligant on the Roost. That's a good play. I, I definitely can get behind that play. That's definitely a good play. Iron Hands is going to come in there. And now Rever Room is going to come in. It's going to victory dance. Oh, man. Is this it? Is that the game? I don't see how he comes back from this. I don't see how he comes back from this. Unless this thing gets a move that I'm unaware of. It might even just die to the close combat. I'm very curious, actually. I feel like it does die to the close combat if you're Hustle. Ooh, a 2%. As Haze, oh, Haze is a good bring, definitely. But yeah, and you're able to kill that Pokemon and you can just do that again on the Iron Hands later. That's fantastic. Man, Victory Dance is so cool. Oh, uh, I'm sorry to hear that, Miles. I hope everything goes all right with that. Um, But yeah, Lilligan looks like it's just in such a good position to win this game now. I didn't even think about how good of a win con Lilligan was until right now. Uh, the Dunsparce is going to come in. Mudsdale Body Press kills that. The Dunsparce Slokin comes in. It looks like you've got this game wrapped up. I'll be honest. Swords Dance on the Iron Hands. Explosion. Fantastic. Another Swords Dance from the Iron Hands. We go Hoopa. Oh, ho, ho. I'm always here for a Hoopa kill. We get a kill with Hoopa. And Lilligan wins now, right? Lilligan just wins the game. We go Zapdos. Zapdos can also win the game. Thunder Wave on the Zapdos. It looks like the game's just a wrap. Yep, yep, game is wrapped up. No, you play good, Dan. I like that. I, I really like the Lilligan. I think Lilligan is so good in this matchup. Uh, the only thing, I probably wouldn't have used my Spather super early. I would have went Zapdos and the Lando, but it ended up working out. You did so much damage to so many things. You put a lot of things in range of different uh, different threats on your team. I think you play well, especially for your first draft game. That's fantastic. Yeah, Defense EV, Rever Room. Yeah, I am surprised that did not kill. Uh, and if that killed, you won the game, so... No, that was good for your first game for sure. Uh, we'll pick one another game here. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven games left. We're almost done. Almost done. We're going to do this one that I'm just on right now. I'm actually not sure whose game this is. I'm not sure whose game this is. Low key clean. Oh, it's Window. Window and Zapdos. Okay. Hold on. It's Window versus Tism. A clear best draft battler uh, are we talking all time or are we talking right now uh there are some big names that a lot of people agree are probably towards the top 
uh, at least all time. There's like Gypsy King, Zazo, and Aki VGC are probably three of the best people off the top of my head that I could think of right now. But my brain's a little, little wonky. I've been streaming for a couple hours, so John for sure number one. Uh, in my head, yes. In everybody's head, no. So we're gonna go ahead and do this one. I think uh, Window is low key clean, and then Tism is the other team with Gardevoir. Baxcalibur goes insane in this matchup, especially with the Abomas No Hail boost. Uh, Slowking, Haolucha, Among Us, and Donphan. This team is insanely bundle weak once Slowking gets any amount of chip, and it looks like this team was probably. I mean, it's This team has a hard time dealing with Slowking, actually. So if this team can deal with Slowking, then Bundle does really well. But if this team can get Baxcalibur in, <laughs> like Bax Caliber just simply in. Uh, it's gonna go crazy. So we'll go ahead and jump in here. We'll see what we have. Don Pan lead versus the Meowth Uh Flower Trick, as I assume rocks get up. We just value our rocks, right? I spit is that banded Don Fan? Holy crap, I did not anticipate that. That is awesome. Uh Abomas is gonna come in here. Bax actually is the switch into this. Okay, Aurora Veil comes out. And dragon in. We just start we just start dancing. Leech seed. That's a fair play. That's a good bring. Aurora Veil. Dragon dance again. Uh Gypsy and Zazo does two of the best to ever played the game. K Quick is another showdown guy who's considered to be one of the best. Um Yeah, those two guys for sure, Kurt. We're gonna see a blizzard come off. That does way more damage to Bax Calibur than I anticipated. This is a, a pretty strong Obama snow. I forget how strong this mod is at times. So now we're a plus two plus two Bax Calibur. Oh no! See, okay. So this is a situation that you guys usually want to uh, avoid. You don't want to get set up in this position just to switch out because now you just simply lost 64% uh, HP on your backs. That's unrecoverable for no reason at all, unless you're healing with on Gardevoir, which might be a possibility in this matchup. Um, but yeah, I just simply. You, you, you want to try to avoid that if you can. Once you saw the Aurora Veil go up, maybe you switched on to something else. I'm not sure. Um, Slowking's going to come in. Uh, nice Thunder Wave on the Enamorous. That is a fantastic Thunder Wave for sure. Uh, Power Gym comes out and does no damage as Tailwind Calm Mind. Oh, no. What's happening? Amoongus comes out. What's happening? Clear Smog. Leaf Storm. What's going on? What's going on? Guys, I'm panicking. Why didn't we go back to Caliber? Why did we why did we waste the eject button or eject pack on the Amoongus? Why did we leaf storm? Hoping to force a switch into the Obama Snow? I guess? That's that's the only thing I could think of. That's the We're here now. We're in Bax Caliber. Uh unless maybe oh I guess I guess it was to waste the turn of Aurora Veil. Actually, that makes sense. Um that did way less damage. I don't know Enamorous' move or Enamorous' stats, so I, I didn't anticipate that to even come close to living, even through Aurora Veil. Uh, I overestimated Baxcalibur a little bit there, so. Um, wow, and the flinch definitely sucks because Baxcalibur would have been dead. This would have been revengeable with something like Gardevoir Haolucha, but that flinch definitely sucks because now Baxcalibur gets to live, <laughs> whereas it did not before. We're going to see a Terra Blast come out here. Um, yeah, and now I see crash on the Aurora Veil. I can only assume another flinch. That is unfortunate. Oh, wait, we couldn't have Aurora Veil. Did Snow go down this turn? No, you could have Aurora Veil. Unfortunate. That flinch sucks. That flinch sucks. We're going to see Enam come in now as Bax is going to pull off a DD. Able to pick up the kill on Enam here. Obama Snow comes back in. We're not getting another flinch, right? Oh, wait, we DD'd. Obama Snow's dead. Do you win? Quirk Speed. No, you don't win. Wait, why did we sack a... Uh... Is it for 100% accurate blizzards? That has to be what it is, right? Yeah. But slow. it doesn't matter. I, I, I disagree with this sequence of events. Whereas we could have just sacked Obama Snow if we were going to do this anyway. And kept Anam as the sack piece. Or just simply sacked Enam. Because Slow King still walls you until the end of time. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, there's just nothing you can do. You're not breaking through this. Power Gym, not quite enough to take out the Pokemon. Slow King's now going down, doesn't matter because Bundle's dead. This game should be wrapped up. Windows should win this one, I think. White Herb, that's cool. Close Combat? Oh, it was for the Close Combat, not for the Salamence. You would have been Clear Amulet, I guess. No, you wouldn't have because of uh, 
because of Unburden. We're going to see Terra flying. Terra Blast kills the Halucha. Gardevoir comes in. Yep. And we're going to see Psychic probably. Intimidate. Or Sphere. Okay. I mean, that kills. In comes Arcanine. Or Sphere. Does not kill. And Arcanine does not have enough juice to win. So, winner's going to win there. I'm a little confused about a couple uh, of different plays, like the sacking of a Namorous and a Bomb of Snow, when only one of them really needed to be sacked. Um, and I just think this team just simply, once Mios Grotto went down turn one, they had a lot of trouble breaking Slowking, unfortunately. So, it is what it is. They're going to, unfortunately, take an L there. Uh, that sack could have worked if he freeze-dried reading the Slowking switch in. That, I still, I, I still don't know. Because, look, like... So it did 40%. Slokin could have just, um, what's it called? Slokin could have regenerated it off. So it wouldn't have ultimately mattered. He still would have been paralyzed and it, it would have just been, uh, it would have been slower than the Haolucha then, could have died to the Haolucha. It still wouldn't, it, it still doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but I digress. We'll go ahead and go to the next game, which is SJ's. We'll go to SJ's game now. Told me not to watch this game, but we're gonna watch it. So we see Zoroark, Palafin, King Gambit, which is his Terra, Captain Sylveon, for some reason, Avalug, and Vivian. And then we see a Dozo, Glamora, Polt, Thundi, Ursaluna, and Cleavor. This is an intimidating team. This team is scary. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump in here. We see a Palafin lead and a Cleavor lead. I assume maybe a U turn into Thriller. Oh my gosh, dude. Thriller, thank you so much for the $20, man. You did not have to do that, man. You have donated $70 today. Oh my gosh. I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you so much. I don't know what I've done to deserve Somebody all these donations, me. guys. I appreciate you guys so much. You guys have showed so much support on this stream. This has been crazy. It's like a dream come true. I really appreciate all of you guys. Um, Wow. That is crazy. We're, we're going to see. So my bad if the music was playing, by the way. Uh, U-turn as the Palafin gets. Yeah, drop some lightning bolts for thrill, Thriller for sure. Uh, we see a U-turn on the King Gambit. Do some massive damage to the King Gambit. Glamora comes in. Can do massive damage to the King Gambit. Wow. Wow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wow. That is that an offensive Glamora? Why did that do so much? I mean, he didn't have a switch in. This was his switch in. Wow. And then Toxic Debris go up. No Grounded Poison. And Spikes go up. Dang. Thank you so much, Thriller, man. I appreciate you so much. Uh, we're going to see... Ooh. Unfortunate Sucker Punch Mind Game miss as the Thundee throws up a substitute. <clears throat> and another one as the Thundee plots. Oh, no. Thundee is in a great spot here. Thundee's going to pick up the KO on King Gambit. As Vivian comes in. Oh, Zoroark. Zoroark. It's Zoroark. Zoroark's going to go down here. Fantastic shiny, by the way. Uh, and then Palafin Jet Punch would have to revenge this Pokemon. So, unfortunately, I think SJ probably just didn't have a great matchup into this team. This team looks super overwhelming for SJ's draft. Um, Dundozo is going to come in as a great Palafin check. Uh, it does kind of lose the Grass Knot, but a, a little bit at least, I think, from what I can recall off the top of my head. Sylveon's going to go for Hyper Voice, do massive damage to that Dundozo. Yeah, don't say congrats to me. Say thank you to Thriller. Thriller is Thriller's a real one for real. Hyper Voice is 94% to the Cleavor, who has, I guess, negative special defense. And we're going to get rocks up too, so all types of hazards are up except for sticky webs. Um, as we're going to see Thundee come in, clean up the KO on the Sylveon. Uh, yeah, I actually haven't seen Hisui and Zoroark shiny until the other day. I saw it on Wi-Fi. It was really good. I really like it. Um, Dundos is going to come back in on the Palafin, who does, cannot switch out now because of the hazards. We're going to see the Grass Knot now has the good pivot into Dragapult. Uh, we're going to see Jet Punch. Palafin's going to go down here to the Sucker Punch and the Dragon Darts on the Avalog. I'm a little surprised we don't see Draco. Or the, ooh, that was a good call on the Vivian. I guess if Vivian got in there, 
if Vivian got in there and it, it, it could quiver, it could have got a little out of hand. I think Ursaluna still could have uh, managed, but I guess he didn't really need Dragapult to win this game. Thunderous kind of just won the game. So good games to both of these players. I think I think SJ just had a poor matchup. I think uh, who is who, who is his opponent? Let me double check. Caffeinated Hog. Caffeinated Hog, if you're watching this, man, I think you just played fantastic. I think you this was a good game by you. You played into the hazards. He did not have removal other than Avalug, and you played into that very well. And I I, I can't gotta give you props. That was a good game. Uh, my favorite shiny is Excadrill. Dude, Excadrill is actually one of my favorite shinies as well. I love shiny Excadrill. Oh, uh, we got five battles left. And we're gonna end with Goose's game. Because that is a heartbreaker. We're going to go ahead and go down the line here. We're going to see... Let me see whose game this is. We also have a live battle going on right now, by the way. Oh, I kind of want to pull it up. Kind of want to pull it up. Let's see how it's going. Just started. Wombo versus Corey. We'll check back in on that at the end of the stream. <clears throat> So I actually don't know whose game this one is. Let me see. Uh, let's see, Delicious Falcon. Blue picks. I think, that, oh, Sir Blue, it's Sir Blue in Zapdos Division, okay. Sir Blue versus Waiachi. Gotta end on Lanad, straight up. Gotta end on Lanad. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get in here. So it's Blue versus Waiachi. Uh, Terra Tyranitar, I do remember this team. And then we had the Sun, almost Sun team. That was also part Rain. We're, this is so weird because we're seeing Walking Wake twice in one week with no Torkoal, which is insane. Slitherwing, Walking Wake, Volcanion, Grimmsnarl, Decidueye, and Santaconda versus Terra Tyranitar, Cloud Zyre, Thundee, uh, Garganaku, Urshifu, I think Rapid, if I remember correctly, and Venomoth. So we are going to go ahead and hop in here and see what is up. It looks like this team, it, I don't see a way they switch into Slitherwing consistently. I think Slitherwing is going to be very overwhelming and they lead it. So Slitherwing is going to be extremely overwhelming. Earthquake. Good night, Claude Zyre. He was just a loaf. He was just loafing, man. You didn't have to do that to him. That means probably banded with how fast they went thunderous. I can only assume. Uh, Santa Con is going to come in. I love seeing some Santa Con. I love Nasty Plot comes off. Grass Knot does not Oko this. Grass Knot does Oko Santa Con. Good night, Santa Con. You were great for my eyes. Uh, Draco is going to come off here and do lots of damage to... Wild who? We're just making up moves. I think I have to forfeit you out for making up a move. That shit doesn't exist. That's not a real move. You made that up. <laughs> He's going to kill the walking wake with some made up ass move that does not exist. Uh, it was scarf walking wake. I can only assume that you did not outspeed this naturally. And then we go Slitherwing for the first impression. No, we go Gooby or Gobby, not Gooby uh, for the Thundee. So it is turn five and there have been four knockouts, by the way. This is insanity. This is insane. And yeah, Titar is the Terra. Uh, it's Terra flying and whatever else. Uh, there's no order for this. It's just what people recommend and then otherwise it's random and we I don't think we've done your game yet class I think I just saw your game up here so we can do yours next if you want to um, But yeah, this is an absolute just slugfest as you said so far. This is crazy uh, We're gonna go ahead and par see the parting shot on the Garganacool here Garganacool into Decidueye into the Stone Edge This is a Fizz Def. I would only assume Covert Cloak Decidueye knock off touch 50% to the Venomoth, as Venomoth is going to quiver. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Light screen. Uh-oh. I mean, we go, yeah, I was about to say, Volcanion has really good natural spadef. We probably beat this in a one-on-one -on -one situation still, and we force them out, so it looks like we do actually do that. Oh my goodness, you're specs. You're just specs. You just are. You don't do 37% to this Pokemon without specs. Uh, Decidueye comes in. Oh yeah, it being Fizdev makes sense for the Urshifu for sure. In comes Tyranitar. We knock off this Pokemon's item. Uh, and we're going to Dragon Dance. We're actually not going to Terra here. We're going to U-turn. 
I don't know what Terra... I think they're Terra Flying. Terra Flying would be really good here. We see Terra Electric come out. We're not going to Terra. Well, a Dragon Claw, you're going to die to a U-turn. You are going to die to a U-turn. In comes the Volcanion. Uh, I assume we Terra Electric just in case they had Aerial Ace. That made, that made sense. Volcanion comes in and forces in... Oh, Garganical. Takes 83%. Gets soul cured, doesn't matter. He's gonna pick up a KO on the Garganical. Uh, Venomoth's gonna sludge bomb, and what do, you, do we slither ring? Yeah, right. we slither ring first impression. That kills because Venomoth has no physical defense. And Decidueye should wrap up the game for blue. The only. Oh, you're Rocky. I was gonna say, I don't know if I agree with going hard Decidueye there, but if you're Rocky, it doesn't matter. I do think the pivot into this on the Garganical earlier was a little weird then, but it's whatever. We're gonna see a win there. Um, absolute destruction the first couple of turns. I just, I want to go back really quickly and watch this. One turn, one kill. Three turns, two kills. Four turns, three kills. Down goes Walking Wake with, that, that shit's made up. That's not a move. Uh, five kills and, or four kills in five turns. That's crazy. You, you don't see that very often. Um... We are Martin, we are watching these in absolute random order right now, but if people want to recommend them, then it is what it is. So we'll go ahead and do Klyze because he was here, and I see that he's here. We have four games left, and Klyze, I think you're one of them. So let's just double check here. Yeah, you're one of them right here, so we'll go ahead and check it. Uh, we got Cyclazar, Iron Moth, Terra Iron Moth, I think it was Fairy Grass, uh, Houndstone, Urshifu, a Rapid, Arcanine Husui and Goldengo versus classic Lanad, Iron Hands, Serena, Lycan Dusk, Samurai Husui, and Volcarona. I think the Terra on this team is Volcarona. I could be mistaken though. I think it's Volcarona. And we'll switch to Clyde's side since he's here. Uh, it looks like Hazards do great. Hazards with Samurai Husui is just this thing being able to spin is a little annoying, but it doesn't offensively pressure your team pretty much at all. Pretty much doesn't ever offensively pressure you. We're gonna go ahead and load in here. We see Hisui Arcanine lead and Samurai Hisui lead. Uh, Ar what? Are we slow Arcanine? Are we Scarf Hisui and Samurai? Are we? Why are we staying in? Oop. Why? Why are we staying in? Turn one with the Arcanine. I'm a little confused by that. We have Urshifu, right? This is this is Terra Water. Urshifu, this is the switching to this Pokemon, yes? I am I'm very confused on why we did not switch out. Also, I'm turning the music down a little bit. I don't think it's really that big of a deal, but um Yeah, I'm I'm Alright, I guess Michael Morbius picked up a KO. We see Houndstone come in and Memento, interesting. Into Iron Moth, yeah. I, going for game turn two, I guess. Lycanroc comes in. Terra Fairy, agility. Do you Oko this? Energy Ball, Sash, Endeavor, right? Endeavor. Endeavor plus a Cellar Rock. So I, I don't know about the Arcanine sack. I also don't know if I agree with giving up both Houndstone and Iron Moth within the first five turns. I don't know if I necessarily agree with this sequence of action. In his head rent free, in my head rent free, apparently. Uh, Cyclos is gonna pick up the KO on Lycanroc. I have a hard time believing that you don't win this game. I'll be honest. Yeah, you go Lando, you just claim a KO, right? With either Sandseer or Earth Power. Yeah, he has Ice Spinner. Switch out, switch out, switch out. In comes Iron Hands. He didn't have Ice Spinner. <laughs> no, no more Assault Vest. We're gonna see the U-turn come out. Uh, probably an Earthquake here, right? Yeah, very good Earthquake on your part, Klyze. Uh, as we're going to see the Recover or USD, Earthquake again. I mean, you it, you can just constantly Earthquake if you're not Sword Stance. It doesn't really matter. Hex is going to come out here. Earthquake, good night, Goldango. Urshifu comes out. You live on one. I don't know what the roll on that was. Uh, and you're going to actually take him out. If you didn't kill there, how did you beat Urshifu? Let's see. Uh, if you had Jet, you were in a little bit of a tricky spot, but Serena should have been able to get the job done. Um, Cyclozar comes in, and Cyclozar just can't beat Volcarona. So I'm very confused on the sequence of events as to why three Pokemon were sacked in five turns, but it happens. People get nervous, man. It happens. So 
he ran AV, uh, AV on Iron Hands. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You live 70%. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, it is what it is. Good game, man. I think you played well. We got three games remaining. Three games remaining. So we have Apple versus Pikachrod, Luna versus Horus, and of course, of course, we got Lenad over here, which we're going to save for last. Uh, I guess we're just going to go in order. We're going to do Pikachrod versus Apple. We see an Enamorous, Cyclozar, Crocodile. Ah, man, you brought Berserker? Ah, come on, man. Uh, Regieleki, Klefki, Gyarados, which is Terra, Moltres, Alolan Muck, and Hisuian Lilligan. Hisuian Lilligan looks like it has a fantastic matchup if it can ever get a victory dance off, which it could do against something like the Cyclozar or even the Crocodile. So, yeah, I think... Uh, I think that this Pokemon is really good on Apple's side, but I think otherwise the blanket matchup this side does better But if we can set up the, the Lilligant sweep, it's looking pretty good actually. I assume Glow King needs to be chipped a little bit And I assume Enamorous needs to be chipped for Ice Spinner. I assume Ice Spinner doesn't kill a plus one. We'll see So we see the Cyclozart plus the Lilligant. Oh, wow, we just lead the Lilligant I don't know if I agree. Are we victory dancing immediately or immediately Ice Spinnering? Okay, I think crazy. That's a crazy lead. Uh, we see uh, Lola Muck coming on the Glow King. That makes sense. Chili Reception is going to come out here as Crocodile comes in. And probably Stealth Rock, right? You get your rocks up. Get those rocks up, King. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch out here as the Gyarados is going to Dragon Dance. Oh, this is scary. What Terra type was this? I forget. We're going to Earthquake. Cyclos lives on two. And we Dragon Tail. Crisis averted. Uh, as the Alola Mux can come back in here. Kurt, you do kind of look like a Berserker. I wouldn't even say kind of. I would say they mimicked Berserker off of you. Honestly. Um, we see Crocodile come in as the Alola Muck protects here. Uh, why do we protect Alola Muck? Knock off. Oh, for Black Sludge recovery? Okay. Uh, Gyarados comes in hard on the Crocodile. On the earthquake. Okay, okay. That was a risky move because this is obviously your win con. Oh, foul play. It doesn't matter. You're dead now. Um, Reggie Alec. Reggie Alecki comes in on the crocodile. Rapid spin comes off. Okay. Why did we not go Lilligant? I feel like Lilligant always forced this out, forced it in the Rotom Heat potentially. Um, and if you were Victory Dance, you close combat and you were in such a good spot. I'm not unless you value hazards being away that much, which is the only reason I can see that is if you're not boots Moltres. Uh, Acro is going to do a big chunk of change to this Crocodile here. Rabbit Spin going to keep those hazards off of the field. Reggie Lucky goes down. We go. Uh, please victory dance. Do we victory dance? If we victory dance, you win. I, I think. I, I don't know how much damage you do to this. No, we're Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace for what? And why did we click Aerial Ace there? I'm I'm very curious as to why we were uh, we were aerial ace. Lilligan can't rapid spin. I, who does who said Lilligan rapid spin? Nobody said Lilligan rapid spin. Kurt, you're as bad as when Star came in and said, "Why did we not Brave Bird?" Whenever there was not one Pokemon on either team that got Brave Bird, you don't make sense. You don't make sense. I thought it was Scarf and uh, Lily was scared. Scared Lilligan. Uh, Chili Reception from the Slow King. As Crocodile comes in, there had to be something. There had to be a reason Aerial Ace was brought. I feel like it wasn't just brought for these six Pokemon, right? Obviously, I don't know these uh, these matchups off the top of my head. Still live. Yep, we are going on three and a half hours, Amo. We have this and two more matches. So, uh, Crocodile comes in on the Clef Key. And in comes the Lilligan now. Okay, here we go. Let's start pushing some progress. Huh? Leaf Blade, that's gonna do nothing. That does nothing. That does about as much as Aerial Ace, actually, I think. It did more than Aerial Ace, that's funny. Um, in comes the Muck. Your Apple, by the way? Gotcha. Uh, Coco Delay comes in. Oh, Lilligant was Scarf, not scared. Lilligant was not scared, it was Scarf. Got it, okay. Okay, so that's why turn one, your turn one play makes a lot more sense then. I gotcha. I gotcha, man, Crocodile. We see the Moltres come in. Are we boots? We're not boots. Earthquake. 
Uh, Stone Edge, good night, Moltres. Moltres, the bulkiest man on the planet, is gonna pick up a KO on the Crocodile. In comes Enamorous, and down goes this. How healthy is Klefki? Klefki's gonna come in here. Nope, I mean, Muck comes in. It probably lives its AV, right? You would assume. Uh, let's hope that Berserker dies a quick death because I don't want to see it on my screen anymore. Lilligan's gonna come in. Iron Head. Oh man, that crit blows. Now you can't switch into rocks. Ice Spinner. I mean, what do you, you just Ice Spinner again? Yeah, you have to. Put in a really shitty spot after that. Rotom Heat. Yeah. Yeah. Down goes the Lilligan, unfortunately. Uh, and then <sighs> kills the Muck. And at this point, unfortunately, you look like you lose Apple. Steel Beam? Oh, man, that's pretty cool. But unfortunately, Berserker picked up, I think, three kills. Or two kills, which is disgusting. I hate this Pokemon. Get it off my screen. Airlace was for not missing Hustle. Got it. Um, Berserker kill? How about Berserker two kills or three kills? This, this mod's disgusting. I don't like this Pokemon. I do not like this Pokemon. Um, but yeah, I, I think knowing the Lilligan with Scarf changes my perception on the game a lot. I think maybe we should have just played the Gyarados a little bit more conservatively. Because Gyarados looks really good once it gets a DD off. It actually looks very difficult to stop. He was Intimidate Crook, so that's like one way around it. Um, but like on Berserker, I don't think Berserker gets Thunder Fang. So maybe my my advice would have just been play the Gyarados. Play your Wincon a little bit more conservatively. Somebody Trey, do not me. let this distract you from the fact that JJQ... Thank you so much for the $2, Trey. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Trey for mod. Uh, we're going to have two more games left, and one of them is a treat. We have a Lanad game, but right now we have Horus versus Luno, I ha Lunar. Excuse me. I haven't seen this game. We have a Baxcalibur, a Houndstone, two Houndstones in one week for some reason, uh, a Lolan Muck, an Iron Valiant, a Rotom Heat, a Scizor versus a Volcarona, Screamtail, Dragapult, Iron Treads, Urshifu, and Overquill. This team is horrifying. I, I don't know where I rated this team, but these six are horrifying. Horrifying. I don't know. Let's try to delve in a little bit. So Dragapult actually doesn't have the best matchup in the world into uh, potential speed boosting Iron Valley and Alola Muck and a potential banded bullet punch scissor. I'm obviously it's still Dragapult, so it still does well, right? But it doesn't have the best matchup in the world. Volcarona looks crazy once it gets a quiver off. Absolutely insane. Um, if it is Terra 2, which I assume with these six, it, it's either this or the what I can only hope is an Urshifu Rapid. Uh, and if it's Terra Water, that just, it looks, I fail to see how it has trouble winning this game with Rocks up. Uh, but on the other side of the coin, as per usual, Baxcalibur gets a DD up and goes crazy. And also Iron Valiant as a late game sweeper is gonna be awesome. So Bax plus Iron Valiant is really good in this game. Uh, we'll see what's up here. Everyone is truly obsessed with. I also, I really like Scizor. It was a different, a later love for me. But we're going to see Dragapult as the Houndstone comes in. And now, obviously, the Muck is going to come in on the U turn. That does a lot of damage. We're going to see Iron Treads come in. Ideally, to get Rocks up, I would hope. To get Rocks up. I agree with that play. Rocks are very, very big here. We're going to see Earthquake do a ton of damage to the Scizor because of a crit, unfortunately. Uh, and that blows because Scizor does not have any recovery this generation. Scizor's going to get the Defog off. If I were him, I would just go for Rocks again. That crit definitely does suck, though. Uh, rocks are probably here to stay. Now Dragapult's going to come in. And in comes the Alola Muck once again. Yeah, Rocks are up on the field now. And this team looks like it's going to have a really tough time losing because Volcarona is going to get set up pretty well. Give me carrot. <laughs> Wait, oh, I've seen that video. The uh, pufferfish eats a carrot video. Um, so we're going to see Urshifu pivot in on the scissor, uh, preventing a defog. That is boot scissor, by the way. Surging strikes. U turn. Rocky? No Rocky helmet. Dragapult is going to come in. Ideally, it's going to throw up a Will O Wisp. A Draco, which kills Houndstone, who's not very good. Uh, in comes the scissor now. Are we flamethrower? We're not. We're not going to prevent the defog then unfortunately uh i can assume based on the way he's playing the defog uh you're probably going to be non-boost baxcalibur and you're praying for baxcalibur to win the game so we're gonna see close combat here take down the scissor uh i am valiant i ooh, ooh, okay quirk drive speed screamtail is very good in this pokemon though we're swords dance okay we switch no why did we do that 
Why did we do that? Why did we Swords Dance to switch out? That is... We need to start doing the bingo cards like Owen does because um, there would be a bingo card for setting up and then switching out immediately after. There are certain situations where it makes sense early in the game, uh, but like this, like late game, you had your booster, you, you were set up, you just go for it. You just go for the damage. Even if you get paralyzed, you you shift. You shift to your in-game being Vast Caliber because even if you switch out, you have to do that now because now you're a slow little boy with Iron Valiant. So we see Rotom pivot in. D-Gleam, yeah, I see... I gotta see how much that did. I gotta see how much that did. D-Gleam, it did like 75%. What, let's say we were play rough. Did we two a KO? Oh yeah, we did two a KO. I don't know why we switched out. Even if it was max max, we two a KO. The only thing I think is if we're spirit break. But even then, a minus one D-Gleam doesn't two-hit KO us, so I, I have a hard time seeing why we switched out there. I have a, I have a very, unless it was like a misclick, uh, something like that, I have a hard time seeing why we would ever switch out there. Cause I'm gonna be honest, was this Intimidate? It was. I mean, Iron Valley was just in such a good position. I don't think it won because of uh, Intimidate Shuffle, unless you call the switches with Sword Stance. But I'm, I'm very confused on that. So we're gonna see Dragapult come in here as the nasty plot from the Rotom comes off. And the switch out, again, again. I feel like it was just better. Like, that one is more understandable than the last one. And also, we're nasty plus Volt Switch. Again, I highly recommend against being uh, set up plus a momentum move. Uh, we see Muck come in. Muck's gonna get 2 a KO'd now. Yeah, Muck's gonna get 2 a KO'd. This Pokemon's gonna go down. We go into probably, oh, we're, ba we're Protect with Black Sludge. You might live one now. It looks like you do probably live one now. So you're gonna knock off. We're gonna knock off. Crit. Safety goggles. So I assume there's an Amoongus or something, or Toad's Cool that uh, was in the matchup. We're gonna Momento. Ooh, are we are we gonna DD with Bax Caliber? Any Bax Caliber DDers? Any Bax Caliber DDers? Come on, we can do it. Terra Dragon. All right, let's do it. Why not do it again? Do it. Again. Do it again. Haze. Ah, good bring. Great bring by Luna. You have to try to get one up. Uh, he's just gonna spam it. Unfortunate. Yeah, uh, Joey does sound uh, sound different in his streams than his videos for sure. But I think everybody does too. But yeah, we're just gonna see a toxic haze combination. Unfortunately, whittle this back caliber down past the point of being able to win the game. So that's unfortunate. I still don't know why we switched out. I'm so sad. We were spirit break. Ah. Uh, that's so sad. We were poison jab. Why did we switch out? This is so sad. Down goes. The game's over, unfortunately. That's so sad. I feel like when the Iron Valiant was at plus two, plus one, we should have at least tried to go for a game. That is, it, it happens. It happens. People get nervous. I'm not trying to be mean. It happens, but. Ah, that's just so sad to see, man. Unless we were not last move fighting move. If we were last move fighting move, you, you could have potentially... Nah, not with Jet. You would have at least got one. You would have pushed progress. Uh, but So the last game of the, the stream here before I go do anything else <laughs> because of my throat absolutely dying is going to be a treat for you guys. We have Lenad Jr., or not Luna Jr., Goose Jr., Goose versus Stein, Steen. Uh, if you guys do not know, this is the man that is behind Lenad. Lenad is a great meme within the community. Everybody loves Lenad. He posted a very poorly drawn paint version of Lenad, and everybody fell in love with it. And so it's Lenad season baby. So let's go ahead and get into it. We see Goldengo, a Chansey in 2023 for some reason, a Dragalgi, a Samurai Hasui, a Lenad, of course, the Lenad, of course, and Cinderace versus Sneasler, Chiyu, Yuxi, Rotom Mo, Rotom Wash, Ursa Ring, and Rillaboom. So. Looking at this matchup, I mean, it's, it's Lenad season. Let's get into it. We see a Rillaboom lead versus a Goldango. It looks like... Is there something on Showdown where you can't run grassy terrain on Rillaboom? If this happened once, I would get it. Why did this happen three different times? Why are we three for three on Overgrow Rillabooms this week? 
this is some shit you're never going to see again. I am at a loss for words. All right, we're going to see Goldingo go for Make It Rain. 72%, that is massive damage to the Rillaboom knockoff is going to come off. And we're going to be Cold Burn. Fantastic. So we chew that up. Uh, we're going to switch out here because, uh, ooh, Samurai, that's a bold play. But obviously, he's not going to go for Wood Hammer there. Uh, if anything, he goes for U-Turn. So I'm a little, uh, if he goes for U-Turn, this is tough. He just hard switches, thank goodness. Okay, uh, we're gonna Sacred Sword here. Do massive damage to the Ursa Ring. Ursa Ring's gonna go for a Body Slam, no para? No para, come on, Ceaseless Edge here. Ceaseless Edge here. Sacred Sword again. He might be Choice Locked, potentially. And uh, we're gonna see Rotom is Leftovers. Rotom being chipped is fantastic for the Landorus in-game. So, the, any amount of chip on this Pokemon is fantastic. Uh, we're gonna see a Volt Switch on the very, very bulky Goldingo. Uh, and I like the Goldingo switch as well, uh, because Goldingo plus Chansey actually makes it hard for Rotom to exist, because you can't really, you can be Trick, you can be Trick for the Chansey, but you can't really, because Goldingo can always switch in on you. Uh, we're going to see the Chi Yu pop in here, as Chansey is going to come in for the Chi Yu, and we're going to see Ruination make sense on the Chansey, and we're going to see Nasty Plot. Is Chansey probably going to soft boiled? Yep, there we go. Uh, as Chiyu's going to go for another Ruination, keep this at 50%, keep it at bay, and Chiyu's going to get paralyzed. I think trading this Chansey for this Chiyu being paralyzed is worth it, 100%. Uh, we're going to take 47% from that, and we're going to get rocks up! Goose, come on! Why are we not soft boiling there, Goose? Come on. Uh, we're going to see Psychic, and down goes the Chansey. And it's Lenon season, baby. What are we going for here? Are we just going for Earth Power or Sludge Wave? I mean, you kind of have to Earth Power. You're in a position where you might have to. So, actually, we're going to U-Turn. Uh, I would have probably Earth Powered there just because he didn't want to save probably the Paralyzed Chiyu. But maybe he did. I don't know. Maybe maybe you were still worried about it. You did still kind of sack a Pokemon every time it came in. Um, we're going to U-Turn there. We're going to go Samurai as another Overheat comes out. Oh, my gosh. That killed. That's insane that that killed. That is ridiculous that that killed. We're going to see Lenad come back in. No. Oh my goodness. He's in Goose's head, unfortunately. He's in Goose's head. We're going to U-turn here probably, right? We're going to U-turn the 28% to the UC. We're going to go into Cinderace. Uh, get some rocks up for both sides here. Rillaboom's going to come in, die to a U-turn. I can only imagine a Pyro. Um, probably Rotom come in here. Rotom is going to come in here. Uh, in any amount of chip, this thing is now in range of Lenad, a sludge wave. I can only imagine. Everything is looking like Lenad food. We need a little bit more chip on the Yuxi and need to find out what is up with the Sneasler here. This has to be charcoal. I would, I would assume. Chiyu's going to come in here. Goldingo misses the focus blast, but Chiyu gets paralyzed. That turn didn't happen. Goldingo misses the Focus Blast, and Chiyu gets paralyzed. Turn didn't happen. Goldingo finally hits. Chiyu is going to go down here. Ursa Ring comes in. This dice to make it rain, right? I'm a little, little confused why we didn't go... I mean, he doesn't really have answers to this. I'm a little confused why we didn't go Rotom, I guess? Or Sneeze there? Maybe Sneeze there. We're going to see Ursa Ring go down there. Sneeze going to come in. Yeah, I'm a little confused why we didn't go Sneeze there. Maybe you had to be minus one to live it? Maybe, huh? It lets him potentially live two now. Uh, we're gonna tear a dark with the sneeze there. We're gonna tear a blast. Down goes the gold dingo. Uh, Dragology is gonna come in here. Sn lives the. No! Sneeze there's gonna live. Dragology is, excuse me. Dragology is gonna live the sneeze there terra blast hit, which is fantastic. Great job by the Dragology. Uh, unfortunately, we're gonna miss the Draco. If we had Sludge Wave, I don't think, I think I saw the post game chat afterwards. If we had Sludge Wave, that was the button to click there. Sack to get a split off drop. Yeah, that, that is what I would anticipate as well after looking at it. Um, but if we had Sludge Wave, hitting that probably would have been the move, obviously. But unfortunately, it looks like people probably didn't. So he's going to miss a Draco, and if he hit that Draco, Lenad won, right? Sludge Wave, knockoff, uh, at least the combination of Lenad plus Cinderace did win, right? Even just Cinderace might have straight up won. So that is extremely unfortunate, but now there's no way to beat the Sneezler. So 
that is going to be the last game, guys. Lenat is unfortunately not going to be able to get it done. We are actually going to go ahead and end the stream, guys. I've been streaming for three and a half hours, 24 different games. I hope you guys enjoyed. Kurt, I hope you're ready to potentially edit this three and a half hour VOD. Thank you guys so much for watching. The support on this stream was insane. It was actually way more than I could have ever asked for. And I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. And hopefully this won't cut out my outro this time. I tried to wait a couple of seconds last time, so it wouldn't. But thank you guys so much for watching. And for now, guys, this has been John Jr. Signing off. Ciao. Thank you. <laughs>